could not ask for a better, more beautiful December evening in central Arkansas than this as we get championship weekend number one underway at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. It is the 7A state final for 2019. The North Little Rock Charging Wildcats and the Bryant Hornets. Welcome inside our broadcast booth, everyone, once again. Glad to be with you on this Friday night and for all three championship games this weekend. My name is Scott Inman. This is Bobby Swafford. We're ready to go again, partner, and this is going to be a really heavyweight fight tonight. When you talk about Bryant and North Little Rock, it should sound familiar. It was it, That's the same matchup as we had last year. The difference is North Little Rock was the king of the mountain last year. Bryant was the challenger trying to take the crown, and the roles have reversed. And I think the only way you can put it is the roles have reversed. These two are expected to be here every season. When the season kicks off, this, these teams, Bryant, North Little Rock, they expect to be here at War Memorial Stadium playing for a state championship. But now you've got teams on the other ends of the spectrum. You've got on one side, you've got Bryant, who's won 16 straight games by a margin of victory of 500 points. On the other side, you've got a North Little Rock team that's 47-4 and four in their last 51 football games. Two of those losses right over there to Bryant. So this is going to be the two teams you expect to be here, and it should be pretty good. Well, they are about to walk through the tunnel or run through the tunnel. The Bryant Hornets are, and we want to get some of that atmosphere in. We'll go down to the sidelines and check in with the third member of our broadcast crew now, Eric Sullivan. Eric. Hey, Bobby Scott, good to be back with you guys as always. We're on the Bryant sideline here. Lots of blue in the crowd, lots of yellow and blue on the other side for North Little Rock. Right at 57 degrees right now. A little bit of winds coming in and out, so that Bryant passing attack, I don't think it's going to be affected none whatsoever because they're going to try to score early. Meanwhile, you've got to look at North Little Rock to get that ground game early. They got one of the best in Arkansas. They want to shorten this game as much as possible. And a little analogy, uh, both teams are powerhouses here in the state of Arkansas, but I think Bryant's got that little Mahal. Muhammad Ali edge. They are confident. They've been unstoppable this year, and they want to make sure North Little Rock knows they are the best team once again in Class 7A. Let's send it back up to you guys. They have imposed the sportsmanship rule 10 times in their 12 games this year. It's amazing. 45 points per game offensively, but Bobby, less than nine points per game defensively. Their defense is really the unsung hero of this football it team. It really is. Of course, the first thing you do when you look at a score is like, oh, okay, they're scoring 45 points a game. They must be an offensive-dominated team, but when you look at Bryant, they're getting it done on both sides of the football. Buck James has been known for his defense at times, his offensive times, and this year, you can really point to Bryant says they've got it working on both sides of the football. As you see, the teams, the captains meeting at midfield. We're about to find out who's going to win the coin toss. We'll stay with that and check that out with you, and then we'll take our pregame break and be back for kickoff, but we want to find out who's getting the football first. North Little Rock has gone through suspensions. They've gone through really freak injuries this year, one to their starting uh, running back, they may be peaking at the right time, though. They had a, I had a chance to see them up close and personal last week at number two Bentonville, who was undefeated, and North Little Rock manhandled a really good team from the 7A West that was undefeated. And they were able to do anything they wanted to at the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively. Jamie Mitchell's got some big boys up front, and they like to pound the rock, and they like to play downhill defensively. And that's one thing that North Little Rock needs to do if they want to have a chance to hang with Bryant. They've got to control that line of scrimmage. Bryant won the toss. They are going to defer their option to the second half. So North Little Rock will be on offense first, and we'll get this thing started when we come back to War Memorial Stadium. You're watching the state football championships on AETN Sports. is that we encourage our employees to volunteer and give back. That's why our bankers are often seen around town involved in activities that have less to do with money matters and more to do with supporting others. From charity events and disaster relief to Chamber of Commerce and civic activities, we enjoy rolling up our sleeves and helping make our community a better place. See for yourself the difference our local commitment can make. More information available at mountainhunterbank.com. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. Back to War Memorial Stadium, North Little Rock and Bryant, both teams about to take the field. As we told you before the break, it'll be the charging Wildcats on offense. And when we talk about, Bobby, the roles being reversed from last year's state championship matchup, 
some things have not changed and really the identity of both of these teams are pretty much the same. They are. When you start, you're talking about North Little Rock as they're taking the field right now at War Memorial Stadium, they're going to run the football first. Second, they're going to run the football. Third, they may run it again. <laughs> and then on fourth down, guess what they're going to do? They're going to run the football. And it all starts with number 22, Brandon Thomas. He's missed a ton of action, a freak accident in the offseason, you know, causing to miss most of the, the first half of the season, the non-conference portion of the schedule with a hand injury. But get this, he's played in 20 quarters this season, has nearly 1,200 yards rushing. So you think about that. Five games and almost 1,200 yards, including 150 last week at Bentonville. He's going to get the football a lot this week. We're going to see how that hand, and he also injured his ankle last week up in Northwest Arkansas. See how that leg holds up as well. He ran for 146 yards on 15 carries a year ago here on the field at War Memorial Stadium. And against Bryant earlier this year in November, six carries, 133 yards, three touchdowns. North Little Rock really didn't sustain much the right. last time they played Bryant, but Brandon Thomas kept them in the game. Yeah, that's what North Little Rock wants to do, and Eric kind of mentioned they want to shorten this game as much as they possibly can, rely on that heavy running game, rely on that offensive line, keep their defense on the field, because this Bryant offense is really dangerous. We haven't had a chance to touch on it, but Austin Ledbetter, 40 touchdown passes for Bryant. You yeah. want to keep his, him and his units on the sideline. I do want to take a moment before we get this thing underway to let you know if you haven't heard already, we will be utilizing instant replay for the first time in tonight's high school championship game and the championship games all weekend and next weekend. We'll talk about the parameters around that, how they're going to use it. We'll even have a representative of the AAA in here to keep us straight on all of that. But we have the, <laughs> the sheet in front of us of how the instant replay will get used. So one of the best kickers in the state, Brock Funk, will kick it away for the Bryant Hornets to get us underway. One of the top scorers in Arkansas. He's had lots of opportunity to put extra points through. He will kick it deep. Sometimes he sky kicks it, but this one goes to the five-yard line. Good kickoff coverage. Debian Larf will be shy of the 20. And that's where North Little Rock will start a 14-yard kickoff return. You can say it all you want, uh, Scott. It's a cliche, but it's also true. Games like this, the, the, the game within the game, the special teams, the turnovers are going to be play a huge factor, and Bryant automatically gets the advantage. They pin North Little Rock inside their own 20 to start the 7A state championship game. Coach Buck James for the Bryant Hornets said defensively they want to force North Little Rock to throw when they do not want to throw. They won't want to allow them success on the early downs. Thomas and Sims in the backfield with Kareem Cotton. And Cotton will hand it off to Thomas. You're going to get a lot of this. And he does turn the corner and gets a big gain up over the 30-yard line. That's going to be a North Little Rock first down. A 12-yard run on the first play of the game. That's what you're going to see a lot of from number 22. It looks like he's going to go to the turf, but he does a really good job of staying on his feet, especially after contact. It's almost like he gets stronger when he finishes runs. One carry, 12 yards, and the chains are moving for the Charging Wildcats. Hart Penfield with the tackle for the Hornets. Big, big runs. The key to North Little Rock staying in the game on November 1st against Bryant. Look at this set. Nobody in the backfield with Cotton. Quick release, but it's overthrown. And it was intended for Braylon Battles, and he's a big target. 6'3", 183, a senior. He's their leading receiver, 29 catches on the season, caught a touchdown pass a week ago. He's going to be their big play guy. Anytime they need a big play, they can just throw it up to the big, the big receiver on the outside but unable to bring it down there. But this is the challenge of throwing on first down when you're not an efficient passing team. Now it's second down and 10, but they've got to feel pretty confident after the way they ran the football to start. Now they go to the I formation. Thomas and Sims back there and it's an inside handoff to Sims and he's got a good hole he's going to be dragged down shy of the first down though but it does bring up a third down and one after a nine yard game 2019 you never thought you'd see a fullback trap in the state championship game but North Little Rock likes to run the football they want to shorten this game you mentioned it Scott you, you, you fail on first down you got to find a way to succeed on second down they do that by picking up nine there with the big man Austin Schroeder the safety for Bryant brings down Sims and now it's third down and a yard Hornets want to win on third down. 
That's going to be a keeper by Cotton, and he's going to be close. Looks like he got it, depending on the spot. He should have the first down. I don't even think they're going to need to measure that. It was a two-yard gain. He only needed one. They have not moved the chains yet. Now they're going to tell him to move them. So it is the second first down conversion for North Little Rock in the game so far, but their first third down conversion. They have not been good against Bryant in the last two meetings on third down. You can see the beef that North Little Rock has up front. They're going to rely on those big uglies to move the chains and keep the clock moving. Thomas and Sims back with Cotton again. Here's the handoff to Thomas. Again, he finds the corner, lowers the boom, and gets knocked out of bounds at midfield. Yeah, Another good game. Yeah, he's only touched the ball twice, but you're starting to see why he's committed to the University of Memphis. I mean, he's, he can finish downhill. He runs defensive backs over. He can run through arm tackles. And he's going to get probably 15, 20, 25 carries if North Little Rock can win on first down. And there you go, seven yards. They're ahead of the chains. Schroeder made the stop again. It's a seven-yard pickup. And it's second down and a long three. Thomas back there with O'Donnell now. Fred O'Donnell. Cotton's going to throw. He's got his man. It's caught by Battles for the first down. And he gets inside the 30-yard line. It's a nice job by Battles to adjust to the football. A little thrown behind him, but he's able to adjust. And you, see, you can see why he's averaging uh, Braylon Battles 12 yards a catch. And all of a sudden, North Little Rock in this first possession of the game, they've gone from their own 19 to inside the Bryant 30. And they've done it in a pretty timely manner. Schroeder again making the stop for the Hornets. A very impressive opening drive for the North Little Rock charging Wildcats. Sims is back out there now in front of Thomas, and it goes to Sims, and Sims has a big hole, but then Bryant turns him back. That's the best defensive stop so far on this drive by the Hornets. Cameron Scarlett met him, stood him up, and backed him up. Three-yard game. You know, I kind of made the jab about running the fullback trap in the state championship game in 2019. That's carry number 150 on the season for the big fullback from North Little Rock. So he's going to get the football a lot. Got to be a change of pace from Thomas going to the outside. And now he's up to over 720 yards on the carry and, on the season. And 4.8 per carry. That's I right. mean, he does a good job. We've got a flag down. Pre-snap penalty coming up here. Substitution. 12 in on the field. It's an illegal Offense. substitution. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Well, like any time in the state championship game, you don't want to see the guys in the stripes very often. And hopefully that's the last time we have to look at Tommy Kraft on the field. <laughs> you know Tommy. I do know Tommy. Fair. Okay. Yeah. Just so everybody home knows. Yeah. <laughs> that's a friendly shot. But that will change the complexion of this series because now North Little Rock is behind the sticks. Bryant wants to force him into a passing situation. So far, it's been fairly effective. Cotton from the shotgun. The give to Thomas. Thomas is going to look to throw towards the sidelines, and it is caught and out of bounds at the 21-yard line by Battles. It's a nice job by Battles. You see the defensive back really sitting on that deep route. He cuts it short, runs about a 10-yard out route, and now they're in third and manageable. They get behind the chains on second down, but now we're in a third and short situation, and now the entire playbook is available for North Little Rock. And that was Damon Bell, actually, who made the throw, not Thomas. He's actually the, the quarterback who spent most of the time in the lineup yeah. when Kareem Cotton was hurt for the first part of the season. Yeah. He's thrown the football quite a bit, a 50% completion percentage, so that's not a big shock. But here we are at third down again. O'Donnell is the fullback in front of Thomas. And we've got movement before the snap. The Hornets are sure that's a false start. Yeah, that's that's something Coach Jamie Mitchell is going to be really False frustrated start. with. A receiver Offense. in the end of the line. Five-yard like penalty. Third down. Line. Turns a third and two or maybe a short three into a, a third and long now for this Charger Wildcat offense. Well, we mentioned those third downs. The last couple of times these two teams have met back on November 1st of this year, North Little Rock was 3 of 13 on third down against Bryant. That's 23%. And in the state championship game last year, 2 of 14, that's 14%. But they've avoided third and long up until this point. And they're going to break out for a passing look again. Sims is the lone setback. Cotton in trouble, and he's going to be brought down. That's going to be a sack. 
Bryant had two free rushers coming, one off of each end, one control Wallace, the Arkansas commit, and he's a guy that you've got to account for if you're North Little Rock, and now North Little Rock looks like they're going to trot the field goal team out. Kennedy Miller, one of the first guys there for Bryant, but he was helped out by several Bryant Hornets. And the Hornets defense has held strong here, and it's going to be a long field goal attempt of 45 yards. They have not had a lot of success kicking field goals this year. Liam Selhorst is only 3 of 10 on the season, and he will be 3 of 11. That's a big stop for the Bryant defense. North Little Rock just really moved the ball down the field, picks up 30, 40 yards, flips the field position. But you mentioned North Little Rock's kicking game hasn't exactly been the strongest. I don't believe they've missed an extra point all season. But you back it up just a couple yards, and the things don't go quite as well in an empty drive for North Little Rock. Well, you think about, Bobby, the little things, too, because if they got some positive yardage there, they've yep. probably gone for it. Absolutely, because you're looking at third and two, third and three, maybe even third and five with the way that this team can run the football. You go for it. But when you're backed up against the chains and you don't want to put your quarterback in bad situations, that's what happens, and now Brian's got a chance to, to show what their offense can do. Austin Ledbetter at quarterback. Ahmad Adams is back there. He's a 996-yard rusher. He's going to be out in the passing game on first down, and Ledbetter throws deep and way overthrown intended for Jake Metters, one of the top receivers on this team. Right, going deep on first down. Yeah, there's two guys that North Little Rock really has to lock on to in the passing game. Jake Metters is one, Hayden Schrader the other. Between those two, how about 108 catches and more than 1,600 yards receiving 25 touchdowns. Those are the two inside receivers for the most part of this Bryant offense. Second and 10. Adams again the running back with Ledbetter. They will give it. Nope, they fake it, and the keeper by Ledbetter. He doesn't run an awful lot. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. Just 44 carries on the, on the season for Austin Ledbetter as they run the RPO, but they don't get any positive yardage. Now, this is what you want if you're North Little Rock. Now you've got an, Aust uh, an offense with Austin Ledbetter and Bryant that's used to playing in front of the chains. Now they're facing a third and long. Now that third down defense has a chance to make a play for North Little Rock. Draven Heron split wide to the right of this formation. Adams again, the running back. Ledbetter sends Metters in motion across the formation. He's looking right side, and he's going deep up the sidelines incomplete. And that was Metters again, the intended receiver, but the throw was just a little too far in front. Yeah, North Little Rock bit on the double move. He could have been running for a while. Metters was running wide open, had a couple steps on the secondary. If you've got one knock of this North Little Rock defense, it is the secondary. Brian trying to exploit that, but the first drive of this game goes to North Little Rock, and they should get really good field position coming up after this attempted punt. Ledbetter is going to punt it away, standing just outside his own five-yard line. And a line drive punt right at Devian Larf. And Larf will get a good punt return inside the Bryant 40-yard line and brought down at about the 37. Yeah, rarely is a missed field goal going to come back and not haunt you with North Little Rock, again, with great field position, even though they missed the kick. And that's the, the beauty about high school. As long as that ball, is once it's kicked, it's a touchback. Goes to the 20-yard line, so it doesn't matter if it's a 45-yard attempt. That ball is going to go to the 20, not like it is in college and the pros when you get the ball from where it's kicked. That's a great point, and that enables North Little Rock to flip the field position once again. And, well, you couldn't have asked for a better start for Jamie Mitchell and the North Little Rock Charging Wildcats. They'd obviously like to have points right now, but they got the opening drive against a very stingy defense, and then they hold possibly the best offense in Arkansas to a three and out. Here's Thomas, and Thomas turns it upfield for another good game. There's one word that Bryant wants to avoid on the other sideline, and that's called confidence. Mm -hmm. the, the longer that North Little Rock can play and keep this game respectable, and get, they think oh, that, that confidence starts to build up, that, that character starts to build a little more, and North Little Rock starts to believe they can win that football game, and that's when maybe even doubt starts to creep in on the home sideline. Austin Bailey made the stop out on the defensive line for Bryant, but it's a five-yard pickup on first. So second and five. And North Little Rock is again knocking on the door here. Cotton under pressure. Throws it off his back foot complete for the first down at the 25-yard line. How about that? It's Battles again. His number one target who came in with 29 catches. He's got three tonight. That's a great job by Cotton. There, Bryant brought too many guys that North Little Rock can block. Free runner right up the middle, but he's able to get the ball off. Not exactly the best form, but 
We'll take it. That's first down. Well, you could see there, too, Bryant a little confused in coverage. Yep. When North Little Rock is breaking the huddle, they're not showing the formation that Bryant is expecting. They change it, and they go to more of a pass look, and that's not something they're really used to doing or seeing. First and 10 at the 25, and the handoff goes to Aaron Sims, and Sims again gets good positive yardage. They will take that on first down all day long. It's a four-yard game. We would love to hear from you. Share your thoughts about AETN Sports and connect with us at AETN.org slash sports, where you can use the hashtag AETN Sports. Well, the other thing they're doing is keeping the Bryant offense off the That's field. Right. You look at that clock, and we're already down to close to five and a half minutes on the first quarter clock. Yep. And Bryant's offense has run three plays. First quarter's half done. Of course, 12-minute quarters in high school football in Arkansas. And perfect game plan so far for Jamie Mitchell and company. Second down and six. Cotton on the play fake, and he overthrows his intended receiver. He was trying to get it to Thomas out of the backfield. Yeah, dangerous play there. Yep, Brian had that one well locked up, and number 41, Dalen Land, really had a chance to, to make a play on that, but Cotton put a little extra mustard on that one, and nobody was going to catch it. So here's where Bryant wants to be defensively. Again, third down and long. That one was almost picked off if yeah. you look at the replay. There. Yeah, you got to believe this is going to be four down territory regardless. So uh, four yeah. play blocks there for, for Jamie Mitchell. You know, pick up a couple and give yourself a chance to have a realistic chance of picking up a fourth down. Bryant fans getting behind their Hornets here. And the handoff to Thomas. Thomas can't find room around the edge. Bryant had that one sniffed out. A really nice job by Tamari on Wilson to set the edge there and force Thomas back to the inside. They would trust the rest of his defense to clean up the mess. It's a loss of one. Hart Penfield on the stop for the Hornets. There were a lot of blue jerseys there. Yeah, I believe Scott told, you, uh, told us before the game, uh, Wilson's committed to play at the University of Central Arkansas there in Conway. The Bears playing tomorrow in the national playoffs, and looks like they've got another good one coming up. So it's fourth down and six at the Bryant 21-yard line. Big play here in the opening quarter. Cotton under pressure, goes down outside the 30-yard line. Kennedy Miller right up the middle. Nobody touched Miller on the, the, the blitz there, and that's where North Little Rock's really struggling. They're not getting a hat on a hat, and they're allowing free rushers, and Kareem Cotton's going to have a really long day. It looks like we might have a, a little bit of a huddle. Yeah, there is a penalty marker down way on the other side of the field at about the 11-yard line. That was well into the secondary and way on the opposite side of which way the play was headed. But we'll see. It might be against the Hornets. Yeah, Bryant's backing up. Yep. Holding defense. Ten yards from the previous spot. First down. That's tough for Bryant. You, you get a sack on fourth down. It looks like your defense has come up with another big stop. But all of a sudden, North Little Rock gets a free first down. And that moves all the way, the ball all the way down to the 11-yard line. Derek Rose working against Braylon Battles. That's what the officials saw there. So now it's first down and 10. North Little Rock can still get a first down. And they go back to Thomas. And Thomas has nowhere to go. No gain. Kennedy Miller again there for Bryant. And the Hornets now starting to win the battle up front just a bit. Yeah, you're starting to see that stout Bryan defense. There's a reason they're giving up 10 points or less on the season, and they're going to make North Little Rock work for it. And this is where the North Little Rock really can't take advantage of their big size battles and his speed on the outside to condense the field on only so many directions he can go. They'll actually lose a yard on that play, so it's second down and 11. And a flag before the snap of the football again. We may have motion here. A lot of self-inflicted wounds by North Little Rock. <laughs> snap infraction. Deep offense. That's a five-yard penalty. It's still second down. Second false start penalty against the charging Wildcats here in the opening quarter. And they have 
an excellent opportunity here, Bobby. When they come in as an underdog, you're in the red zone. That's just yeah. one of the things you can't have happen. Yeah, those are, that's one of those things that you've got to be able to almost perfect if you're North Little Rock in these critical areas, special teams, the, the mental mistakes. They need to win those if they want to have a chance to knock off the number one team in the state. So it's second and 16. Cotton's going to throw. He's looking for his man in the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Braylon Battles. He has been the lone target for Kareem Cotton in this first quarter. Derek Rose defending for the Hornets. Yeah, but we'll take a look at the replay. Battles got a little turned around. Not a poorly thrown ball. Threw it to the outside where only his man's going to catch it. But Battles couldn't track it down. And now it's another third and long for this North Little Rock offense. And the Wildcats are one for three on third down so far here in this first quarter. But this is the longest third down they've gone up against. Battles is to the right of your screen. He's the primary pass target. Cotton looking his way, and he is picked off. Picked off by Rose, and Rose will return it out to the 30-yard line. North Little Rock saying they ripped the football yeah. out. We'll see what they rule. They sure think that. Let's see. The official has not made an indication yet. He's saying the ball is down at the 29, but I don't think he showed possession. And because that would be two turnovers, that would be a first down for North Little Rock. But we got to see what Tommy Kraft and his crew, after they huddle up and decide what happened here. Well, partner, we may actually see our first use of replay. I think they, look at they, they have to review turnovers. They will review change of possession, but they don't think it happened. So it's a first down for Bryant. A little, little confusion there with Battles and his quarterback, Cotton. Cotton broke to the, uh, excuse me, Battles broke to the outside. The throw goes inside and has an easy interception for Rose. And maybe take a look at this replay and see what happened at the end. Yeah, but he was, I think he Might did get out stripped, of but he was out of bounds when he came up with the football. Yep, and it looks like we may be getting a look at it. Well, here we go. This is a little bit historical. <laughs> the first use of instant replay in Arkansas high school sports, high school football, in this state championship game, they are going to take a look at the replay that we've already seen. And we might point out, too, Bobby, that they will be using the AETN cameras That's to right. look at this. So what you're seeing at home is what the official review reviewer will be seeing as well. There's seven different things that are automatically reviewed at really any point in this football game, but one of them is determine possession of the ball. And so that's really where this comes into play. There, there's two things you have to look for as we, if we can fire up the replay. The fumble, the looks like the ball is coming out, but did North Little Rock possess it in bounds? And that's really what they've got to look at here. And it looks like number four, Cotton, is out of bounds yep. as he gets possession of this football. Hey, but credit the hustle of the North Little Rock quarterback, right. by the way. He throws the pick, but he stays in the play and tries to get the football back. And he does, but I think what, what you're saying is he's out of bounds, and that's... Yep. Probably what we're going to see here. Yep. The key is not when the ball starts to move, but when Cotton possesses it, where is his feet at? Is it in the green or is it over in the white? And we're going to hear from Tommy Kraft. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's Bryant's ball, first down. And you'll notice that. the language is the same as they use in college. It's either It either stands or it's confirmed. Confirmed means that the replay confirmed what they called on the field. If, it, if he would have said it stands, it just means that there wasn't enough to overturn it. I would like to point out that historically, Scott and I are one for one on pointing out replays. Well, we're going to quit now. <laughs> we are going to quit now while we're 1-0. and oh. Hand off to Ahmad Adams, and Ahmad Adams is hit at the line of scrimmage, and he is going to maybe lose yardage. I think he's going to lose a yard on the play. Or are you going to get a yard? They're going to give him a yard on the play. You can stay in the know about AETN programs and announcements. Just text AETN to 313131 for updates straight to your cellular device. Adams will likely cross into a 1,000-yard season in tonight's game. He had a heck of a year for the Bryant Hornets. Second down, and it's Adams again in the backfield with Ledbetter. Ledbetter looking right. Now he's looking to run, and he's going to be dropped for a sack inside the 25-yard line. 
North Little Rock all over him. Jordan Owens will get credit for the sack. It's a loss of seven. Yeah, Owens had a huge game last week at Bentonville, and he's going to be the thumper inside North Little Rock's defense. The linebacker can really play downhill. Did a nice job of eyeing up Ledbetter and makes the play. And now Bryant again facing a third long. Now have, they have negative yardage here in this first quarter. Minus four total yards for the Hornets. One of the most prolific offensive teams in the state does not have a first down in this championship game. Ledbetter's got time. He hits Metters. Metters will have the first down, and there it is. The sticks will move. He'll be running out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. Got a flag on the far side, but that was a really nicely designed play. Some crossing routes allows Metters to, to come free. The defense has to go over the top of his, his own teammate, created some space, but we'll see what the Hankey's all about. The flag was near where Ledbetter, or rather, Metters went out of bounds. But it was behind the play. We'll see what happened. Holding offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's still third down. All right, so that will negate the first down. However, because the flag was for holding upfield. It's about a yard, yard difference. It won't make much difference yeah. in what they just converted, so Bryant's yeah. just going to have to do it again. Yeah, it takes an 18-yard catch for Metters off the board. Now again, another third and long. Mm. But that was the first time we've seen some success with this passing game. They ran some crossing routes. We'll see what North Little Rock does to try to counteract it or if Bryant goes right back to it. Five wide for the Hornets on third down and 14. North Little Rock's coming on the blitz. Ledbetter lofts it up for grabs deep downfield. He's got two guys down there, but it wasn't really close to either one of them. Bryant's coaching staff wants a flag. Trayvon Heron was the closest to the football, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Again, it was Jordan Owens for North Little Rock who created the pressure, not able to get to Ledbetter that time, but rushed the throw. And it's been a couple times now, two, maybe three times, that Ledbetter's overthrown a receiver that's open behind the secondary. He was coming off the corner, wasn't he? Yeah, if he I'm was not that mistaken. Time. And he was unabated to the quarterback. Ledbetter did a nice job of avoiding the sack, but he could not convert. And he will stay in there now to punt it away. Second punt of the game for Bryant. Low line drive. Going to be fielded by Larf. And he will be shy of midfield. Good punt team coverage that time. Only a four-yard return for Larf. And we're going to step aside. We'll be back with more of the state football championships next on AETN Sports. Are the curious. Wow. <laughs> the adventurous. Oh. Those venturing out for the first time. <laughs> and those who've never lost our sense of wonder. Whoa. Are you seeing this? <laughs> we are the hungry. Okay. The strong. I must be the greatest. The joyful. A happy little cloud. We believe there is always more we can uncover. More we can explore. We believe in the capacity for goodness. And the potential for greatness. The torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. PBS. 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 We're scoreless in the 7A state championship game from War Memorial Stadium, North Little Rock and Bryant. And we're joined here late in the first quarter by Steve Roberts who at the AAA. And he, we had this already scheduled for you to come in and kind of talk about how instant replay was going to be implemented tonight. And we've already gotten our, our first usage of it and a great, great response. So I think they got it right. Absolutely. They got it right. And I happened to be in that booth when that happened and I was able to watch that process. And it was uh, absolutely fantastic the way they went through the process and communicated on the field. And, you know, that's the thing we're trying to do is get it right. And when we get it right, we get it right. And that's good for all kids that are have an opportunity to play in this type of game. North Little Rock on first down. And Thomas is going to have nowhere to go. Wow. Bryant really got after him there. And it's going to be a big loss on the play. Second down and long coming up. Well, tell us about the kind of the evolution of this. I know you guys have talked about it for a long time. How was the decision finally made and how, how does it work? Well, we have a football advisory committee and the coaches wanted replay in a game like this because of some situations that have happened in Arkansas and in other states uh, across our country. Uh, 
So we, we got a committee together, a subcommittee of that advisory committee and coaches and officials and came up with a, a process that we feel like we could explain in a week because we're only using it one game per classification per year. So we wanted it to be something that's simple, but we could correct the obvious mistakes. Cotton's going to throw on second down and is going to be picked off again. Boy, he overthrew his intended receiver, Braylon Battles, and Bryant was right there on top of it again. Boy, they have now picked off Cotton twice already in the game. Austin Schroeder there to pick it off for the Hornets, and they're going to go back on offense. Well, talk about the the usages then. If you can go over some of the ways that we might see it if the occasion arises right, tonight. Right. And it's real simple. Outside of the final two minutes of the game, the only thing that the replay officials are looking for are turnovers, potential turnovers, scores, or potential scores. That's it. Period. We're not reviewing anything else. Now, the coaches have an opportunity to challenge a call uh, with seven other things. Did a pass get tipped at the line of scrimmage? Did a kick go 10 yards? Uh, That's the biggest offensive play of the night right there for Bryant as Ahmad Adams found room on the outside and gets into North Little Rock territory. That's a gain of 20 yards and a Hornet first down. Uh, so there are seven things that the coaches can challenge if they want to challenge something. In the replay booth, we'll look at that. Coaches will initiate the challenge by simply calling a timeout. Tell them what they want to review. If they win the challenge, they can retain the timeout and their challenge. If they lose, they lose the timeout and they lose their opportunity to challenge. We have one person in the booth making that mm -hmm. decision. He's a veteran uh, high school official, official and uh, is very experienced. Plus, we have DV Sports. We've partnered with them, and they do a fantastic job. And again, it's on the ground for the Hornets. It's going to be Tanner Anderson this time. And Anderson's got another Hornet first down inside the 10-yard line, another 20-yard gain, back-to-back 20-yard -back runs for the Hornets. And not a lot of excitement until I get up here and, and you, try to start the interview, and I get uh, interrupted <laughs> about halfway through every sentence. But uh, it is great. Uh, the main thing is to correct the obvious and just get it right for the kids and the coaches and the programs that have worked so hard to get to this point. So Bryant trying to create the first touchdown of the game after going three and out twice. Ledbetter off the fake, slings it into the end zone for the touchdown. Great throw. Off his back foot, it's a six-yard touchdown pass for Ledbetter to Trayvon Heron, and the Hornets will strike first here in the 7A title game. Their offense finally got going. Yeah, great throw. Moving to his left, throwing across his body. Great placement on that throw. Well, Steve, Bobby wanted me to point out, too, that we're 1-0 and as announcers, too, because we did actually confirm that replay before they actually did. Well, you are bringing up the <laughs> overall percentage of broadcasters then because most of the time they go, I would have never called it like that. That's so. right. Brock Funk is on for the point after, and it is good. And with 18 seconds left to play in the first quarter, the Bryan Hornets lead it 7 to nothing. Coach, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. I you know bet. You, I know you got a lot to do, but I appreciate that clarification. We've got the list in front of us, and it was a success. It was. The first use was certainly a success. And hopefully we'll continue that way, batting a 1,000. Yeah, very good. Thanks, guys. Well, Bobby Bryant really struggling on the offensive side of the football, but they finally got it going there with – back-to-back 20-yard -back runs. They went with Adams, and then they went with Anderson. You know, to start this football game, Bryant looked like they were content throwing the ball, but we talked about Adams, how good he is. He's committed to Arkansas State. Then they come back with Tanner Anderson going to the other side. They're hitting the edges of this North Little Rock defense. They're packing the middle. They're packing the boxes. North Little Rock, so get to the edge. You get past that first wave, there's a lot of green grass out there, and Bryant was able to take advantage, and the offense has started to click. They go from negative four yards to 61 yards just on that one drive. So Funk will kick it away for the second time tonight. He went deep last time. Sometimes he does sky kick it, but he will go deep again here. Feel it at the five. To the 25, a tackle broken and out of bounds over the 30-yard line. That was a good return by Johnny Lewis. Lewis, a 28-yard kickoff return. He actually came into this game with the most kickoff returns for 
the charging Wildcats, and they've got good field position here. Not as good as they had earlier in yeah. the quarter when they were swapping the field or flipping the field, but a good kickoff return nonetheless. It's all about response time for North Little Rock. They landed the first punch. They were able to move the football. They got a couple defensive stops, but Bryant came back, caught him with a haymaker. North Little Rock needs to at least pick up a couple first downs to get some momentum, keep their defense on the sideline, because this is how things start to roll out of, out of control. The offense co can't come out here and sustain something. Kareem Cotton is the North Little Rock quarterback. Looks to be changing the call on what could be the final play of the first quarter. And he's going to go with the reverse flip. Around the end, it's Johnny Lewis, and he gets a nice gain over the 35-yard line. Really nice job by Dylan Land to, to get out there. The kind of a slow de developing play in the last play of the first quarter. Bryant read it well. A lot of times you see a reverse go for 15, 20 yards. Bryant, Bryant did a nice job holding that to four. So we've played 12 at War Memorial Stadium, and Bryant was quiet offensively until the last couple of minutes of this quarter, and they lead it. The defending champs in front by a touchdown. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by... The Cherokee Nation. Our people. Our culture. Our history. Our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. We are beginning the second quarter at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock in the 7A state championship football game. And the Hornets, the defending champs on top of the charging Wildcats, 7 to nothing. That drive for their score was a three-play, 53-yard drive. Yep. Two long runs and then a six-yard touchdown pass from Austin Ledbetter for the Hornets. The Hornets quarterback to Trayvon Heron. And on second down and short, it's Brandon Thomas for North Little Rock. And he gets back close to the line of scrimmage, but he may have lost a yard. Yeah, after those first two drives for North Little Rock, Bryant's front four has really stiffened up. You're starting to see the line of scrimmage not move, and that means the defense is winning at, at the point of attack, and that's where Bryant wins a lot of football games is up front. But if North Little Rock wants to be able to continue to run the football like they had so much success on those first two drives, they've got to get a push and get Brandon Thomas going, who's now got seven carries for just 19 yards. He had 133 the last time these two teams met. Third down and six. Cotton under center this time. And they give straight ahead to Thomas, and he is going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Bryant comes flying in that time. Yeah, there's no push up front. Bryant's defense is really stiffened, and it looks like they're going to get their offense the football back. Do you Good. know someone who couldn't make it to the game? You can remind them to watch it on your television box. Watch it on statewide television on ETN. Razorback commit Cottrell Wallace made the stop there for the Hornets. You saw on the replay, and this will be a punting situation for North Little Rock. Jake Metters is back deep to return the kick, and he'll get a chance to return it. Up the sidelines, and it's a short return. He'll be run out of bounds at about the 33-34 yard line. Eight-yard return by Metters. And Bryant back on offense. We'll see what kind of uh, adjustments Jamie Mitchell and company make on that on the defensive side. Three plays and 50 yards to the house. The last time Bryant touched the football 
Too many big plays given up in the running game that set up the play action pass. Got to try to slow that down. Well, you can certainly feel the momentum has turned after the way this one started. North Little Rock got off to a great start, but missed a long field goal, then turned it over in the red zone, and they have two turnovers in the game so far tonight. Ahmad Adams is the Bryant running back. Metters goes in motion across the formation, and the give is going to be, it's not going to be a give. Ledbetter keeps it himself and gets a short gain. I think he's going to be shy of the 35-yard line. That's just about a two-yard pickup. It's a nice job by North Little Rock. The two times that they've tried to run the option read has Bryant. The charging Wildcat defense has been there to keep it to a minimal gain. If you haven't heard his name yet, become very familiar with number 21 from North Little Rock. Jordan Owens again making the stop on that one. Six foot one, 205, a junior. It's Anderson and Adams back in the backfield now on second down. And the give is to Adams, and Adams is met immediately. He is an outside runner. He wants to get the corner, but North Little Rock yeah, we got a personal yeah, foul. Yeah, we've got all kinds of stuff going on after the whistle. Yeah, one of the Bryant players peeling people off the pile. That's going to cost the Hornets 15 yards, and what was going to be a third and six, third and seven is going to turn into a third and a mile. North Little Rock was the only team all year that actually shut down the Bryant running game yep. when they met on November 1st. So that's not entirely surprising to see them stack up Adams there, although Bryant had a lot of success running the football on their touchdown drive. Yeah. I think what Bryant's going to have to do is try to get the ball to the outside. Again, that's easier said than done. North Little Rock did a nice job there setting the edge and trying to force Adams back to the inside. But then again, these are the type of penalties that you can't have, whether you're the number one team or the team trying to upset the top-ranked team in the state. And this, and this is also the uh, the type of penalties that will drive a coach nuts, mm. a post, post-play post penalty that's going to put you way behind the chains. We're, we're seeing too, many of this, too much of this. And not just because it's him. <laughs> After the play, dead ball, personal foul, offense, that's 15 yards. It will be third down. So instead of second and seven, third and seven, he marches all the way this back, and this is probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of third and 22 to third and 23, and not a lot of plays in the playbook. No. And under normal circumstances with a normal offense, you'd say they're just going to run it and set up a little punt, but not so sure that. Bryant wouldn't go for the first down here. They're 0 for 2 on third down, though. They went three and out on their first two possessions of the football game. Yeah, that's guard Ty Johnson flag for the, uh, the late, the lateness there. They go five wide for Ledbetter, looking left over the middle, and it's complete to Hayden Schrader. He'll be brought down at the 37-yard line. That's going to be short of the first down. Hey, credit North Little Rock there. They had it played right. They gave up the pass completion for 20 yards, but... They were almost in a little prevent there and stopped yep. them short of the sticks. Yeah, he's Bryant's leading receiver. That's catch number 56 on the season, creeping up in there 850 yards. He's a big body, but like you said, that penalty puts him in such a, a long yard situation. You can play a little prevent defense, give up 15, 20 yards, and still a fourth down, and the Hornets going to have to punt. It'll be Devion Larf again back to return the kick of Ledbetter. This one a little more hang time than the last one, but a fair catch is called by Larf at the 29-yard line. And that's where North Little Rock will start. Barely three minutes into the second quarter. Kind of what you've expected to see coming into this game, Scott. You know, two, to the, the maybe the two best teams in Arkansas, at least the two that are playing in the final game. And the way North Little Rock's played since that last Bryant contest, you got to... Got to believe that the Charging Wildcats are one of the two best teams in the state, and right now they're they're going toe to toe with the defending champs. Well, one of the things, if this continues to play out as it has to, statistically speaking, the turnover margin has been big for these yep. two teams this year. Bryant is plus 11 on the season in turnover margin, and they were plus three the last time these two teams met. They forced five North Little Rock turnovers, and there's already been two forced tonight. One stat you always look for in an offense is the touchdown to interception ratio. And for North Little Rock this year, it's not very good. Just four touchdowns and now 12 interceptions for this North Little Rock team. They like to run the football, but Bryant's put them in obvious passing situations and they've taken advantage of it twice already. They've done a good job on North Little Rock's running back, Brandon Thomas. No game there. He was held in the first quarter 
to 18 yards rushing on six carries. Yeah, average is just 2.2 yards to tote. That's well below his average of 8.2 on the season. Cotton under center. Going to throw. Sets up. Has time. He's looking for battles, and he overthrew him by battles. just a step. Yeah, battles had a step, but he was overthrown by just a step. Those are the type of plays that Bryant's missed a couple. North Little Rock now just missed that one. That's a home run hitter that you're going to see probably a couple more times before this game's over. Well, you mentioned battles, 29 catches coming into the game. That may not sound like a lot, but for a team that doesn't throw the ball a whole bunch, he was by far and away their leading receiver, yep. and you can see why. He's He's got the ability to get open. Just 203 passing attempts coming into this game. You you do the math, 12 games coming into it. That's not a lot of, what, 10, 11, 12. I'm not a math major, Scott. That's, that's more your department. North Little Rock on third and 10. They not, have not been successful, and they try to keep it on the ground with a delayed handoff to Thomas, and he is going to be dropped as soon as he gets the football. That's a loss of seven. Yeah, Cottrell Wallace read that all over. Yep. Houston, Houston Nutt might have called that play, the old smoke draw, and their future Razorback was having none of it. Wallace had a little help, too, from Kennedy Miller. Everybody back there in blue jerseys. And the punter comes on again. Josh Beck will send it away to Jake Metters. That's one of those plays where you look, you look like a genius when it works, but then if it gets blown up like that, some people in the stands probably asking, what are you running that for? Metters calls for the fair catch at the last second and will make it. Good hang time on the punt by Beck. And Bryant back out onto the field. Well, they're only one for four on possession so far today. Two three and outs, a touchdown, and then a 15-yard personal foul penalty that spoils the possession. North Little Rock's got to feel pretty good about where yeah. they are defensively so far in this game, but yeah, they just haven't been able to punch it across offensively. There's really only been two breakdowns defensively for North Little Rock, but the problem is when you're playing a team as talented as Brian is, sometimes that's all it takes. Pick up 45 yards on those two carries, and it puts them in the end zone. We'll see what they got on this drive, though. Tanner Anderson is the lone back with Ledbetter here on first down at 10. Metters in motion. Ledbetter's going to throw. He looked left. Now comes back middle, and he's under pressure, and he's going to go down. Another sack for that North Little Rock defense. Rashad Muhammad, the big defensive tackle, 6'3", 250 on the roster. Little swim move got to the outside, and Ledbetter could not step up, and big number seven puts Bryant way behind the chains again here facing the second and long. Now one of the things I asked Buck James earlier in the week, what – Ledbetter has done where he's been most improved from a year ago. You know, he played in this state championship game a year ago, and he said he's become more patient and lets things develop. Problem is, sometimes you can wait too long, yep. and North Little Rock got to him. Anderson again, the back with Ledbetter here on second and long. Nice ball from Ledbetter to a wide open Hayden Schrader. Schrader's got the first down inside the Little Rock 40-yard line. You're starting to see why he's Austin Ledbetter is one of two go-to guys in this offense. It's a big frame going across the middle is Hayden Schrader, listed at 6'2", 195, kind of a wide, wide receiver, tight end, flex, hybrid type position, wide open in the middle of the field, and Bryant's now on the North Little Rock side of the 50. He's so sure-handed, too. You rarely see him drop the football, and he got open there, 28-yard gain. And into North Little Rock territory, Bryant goes again. Handoff. Nope. They fake the handoff to Anderson and the pass out to Metters. He's got another first down. Nice job on the Ridden out of bounds at the 26. You called out the option read. You want to call it the RPO. Ledbetter sees it. His man, number eight, Jake Metters, is wide open in the flat. This gets it out to him. Kind of the long handoff, and that goes for 10, 12 more yards, and Bryant's on the move. 12-yard pickup for the Hornets, and they've got North Little Rock on their heels again. Ledbetter has committed to the Razorbacks to play baseball. You could see he could fling any kind of ball. Yeah. Well, Arkansas will take any kind of quarterback right now, so they may be calling too. <laughs> you never know. Anderson again. We haven't seen Ahmad Adams on this drive. Led better to throw again. Sets up. He's got his man, and he overthrew him by just a bit. Matters had worked himself open. 
but the throw just a little off target. Yeah, Metters is a, is a crisp route runner, and North Little Rock's really having a hard time of keeping him in front. That time the ball just a little overthrown, but eventually those two are going to hook up like they've done, you know, 53 times coming into this football game, and that's going to be a big play waiting to happen. Matters with 16 touchdown catches coming into this game. Anderson's the running back with Ledbetter on third and 10. Lofts it towards the end zone. Great adjustment, and the catch is made by Matters for the touchdown. Kind of funny how it works, Scott. You got a wide open receiver, and you let him you throw it over his head, and that time he is well covered. But again, we knew that Metters and Ledbetter were going to hook up eventually for a big play. And that one, there it was, and Bryant's back in the end zone, and their lead is up to two scores. A 26-yard touchdown pass, the second of the night for Ledbetter. Man, what a great adjustment there to get under it by Jake Metters. Yeah, really good coverage, though, by Slayton Clark for North Little Rock. Had him, you know, hand on a hip, but just couldn't make a play on the football. And Bryant's now a PAT away from taking a 14-0 lead. Brock Funk's extra point is on its way, and it is good as he nails the 74th point after on his season. And the Hornets lead the Wildcats by two touchdowns. 6.02 left, and we're back to War Memorial in a moment. You're watching the state football championships on AETN Sports. One of the best things about being a community-focused bank like Centennial is that we encourage our employees to volunteer and give back. That's why our bankers are often seen around town involved in activities that have less to do with money matters and more to do with supporting others. From charity events and disaster relief to Chamber of Commerce and civic activities, we enjoy rolling up our sleeves and helping make our community a better place. See for yourself the difference our local commitment can make. More information available at mileandhunterbank.com. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. I was married to Fred Rogers for a little over 50 years. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful PBS day was very day. important to him. He had gone around to check out what was this thing called educational television. And he said, I like it. Won't you be my neighbor? It's so important to have those values carried on for every child and every family. Please, won't you be my neighbor? 6.02 left to go in the first half. Brock Funk gets set to kick it away again for the Bryant Hornets. Devion Larf is back deep to return it for the charging Wildcats, and he may set up to sky kick this one. Yeah, he does. It's going to be a sky kick that's going to be fair caught at about the 24-yard line. Hey, let's go down to the third member of our broadcast team. Haven't heard from Eric yet. We were having some IFB troubles earlier, but we want to get his thoughts on what he's seen so far. Yeah, yeah Scott and Bobby, I'll tell you what, Brian, offensive staff, very frustrated there. Defense bells them out with two big interceptions, and we knew Ledbetter wasn't going to stay uh, off for, for very long and hit two big pass plays, a uh, 14-point uh, lead and, uh, for North Little Rock. Kind of giving up on their strong running game and going to the air maybe a little bit too early, but still plenty of time in this half for North Little Rock to get some points on the board. They've got to stop turning the ball over. Well, they get some positive yardage there, Eric, with the option play as Cotton strings it out and pitches at the last minute to Thomas, and he gets across the 30 to the 31. That's a seven-yard run. You feel like that, you know, Eric says giving up on that running game. I think that you saw with the play calling in this first half, Bobby, that North Little Rock felt like they couldn't just do the yep. same old, same old. Yeah, they can't be one-dimensional. But what we, the difference between the first two drives for North Little Rock and then the last couple was what you just saw right there. They've got to win first down. They pick up six yards there. They've got to short, uh, shorten the chains, and that way you can keep your entire playbook because we've seen if they get in obvious passing situations, this Brian Hornet defense is going to swarm. Thomas and Sims in the eye behind Cotton. And they're going to throw it again. Cotton has nobody open. Good coverage. And that's going to might, maybe be a coverage sack. It is. I thought maybe Cotton was going to make his way for positive yardage, but Bryant would not let him go. That's a loss of two on the play. 
That'll be credited to Dalen Land, the top tackler on this Bryant defense. We can continue the football conversation on social media. Use the hashtag ETN Sports. Nice job by Bryant there. Cotton doesn't run the football a whole lot. As much as North Little Rock does, they don't count on their quarterback to tote the football very often. But that time, you thought he maybe had some space, but a nice job by Bryant staying in the rush lanes and getting the quarterback down and forcing a, a third and medium. Yeah, so they had second and short. Now it's third down and five. We'll call it six almost. And it's an obvious passing down again. Cotton unloads up the sidelines. He's going to be picked off for the third time. Another interception. Kyle Knox, the six-foot junior, the cornerback with a great pick for Bryant. That's why those plays are so important for North Little Rock. They can't. They don't, they don't win the 50-50 ball enough to be able to throw it. Cotton underthrows his receiver by several yards there. You saw number 24 there start to break free. That's Johnny Lewis. Just couldn't get the ball out in front of him. And again, Bryant now with the football near midfield with a chance to really put some distance between themselves and North Little Rock. On a game where you'd feel like they'd want to win the time of possession. They'd want to control the line of scrimmage. Boy, you yep. cannot give them up with the turnovers. Three interceptions now. And that's just a dagger for North Little Rock. Tanner Anderson is the back. Got to wonder about Ahmad Adams right now, and it's going to be Anderson hit at the line of scrimmage. Can't shake off the Jordan, first tackler, Jordan. and it's Jordan Owens is right there. Yeah. No game. Yeah, you know, the scoreboard's not looking like it right now. 14 nothing for Brian, but Jordan Owens is playing a really good football game for North Little Rock's defense. You just can't give a, a team this good, Scott that many extra possessions. You talk about extra possessions in basketball because turnovers are a little more frequent. In football, possessions are crucial, especially for a team like North Little Rock who's trying to pull an upset, and that's what this would be. But you give them three extra possessions with really good field position on two of them. Ahmad Adams is back out on the field now, and he's split there with Anderson. Austin Ledbetter scrambling. Buys some time, and he is going to be picked off. He overthrew his intended receiver. Abram Terry is going to be taken down just over the 40-yard line. A late flag's coming in here. We'll see what that is. That could be another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Bryant. But what you cannot do if you're any quarterback, and here Austin Ledbetter for, for Bryant, you cannot be late with the football across the middle to try to float it out there to his running back Adams, overshoots it, and that's going to be easy picking for any defense. And now North Little Rock, has got a little momentum. The crowd's made to get back into it. It's a pretty nice crowd here at War Memorial Stadium on a Friday night. That crowd on the far side from us starts to get into it. This game could get interesting. The ninth interception of the year thrown by Austin Ledbetter. And we'll see about the flag. After the play, personal foul. North Little Rock. That's 15 yards. We'll reset the chains. First down. So that's really tough for North Little Rock because you get the big momentum play, you get the ball near midfield, and now you get the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. All of a sudden, you're back inside your own 30-yard line. There have been a lot of mistakes that North Little Rock would like to have back. And instead, they're playing from two touchdowns down late in the second quarter. Just the fourth penalty on North Little Rock, but it's the timing of those miscues yeah. that have really hurt the charging Wildcats. Hand off to Thomas, and Thomas straight ahead. He will get over the 30-yard line. Another good gain on first down for Brandon Thomas. They'll give him five. Cottrell Wallace on the stop. We'll see if they go back to Sims here. You know, he had to cut the big fullback, 32 for North Little Rock. He had two big runs to start this football game. They have, they've kind of gotten away from him a little bit. Just three carries, 15 yards, averaging five yards a carry. That's a yeah. that's a big body. I'd try to get the football to as much as possible and really shorten this football game, even though we're at three and a half left in the first half. Fred O'Donnell is the running back now with Cotton. Cotton at quarterback. He's going to throw again. Now he's going to run it, and he's going to have the first down over the 40-yard line. We call that the announcer curse. I say he doesn't run it very often. All of a sudden, he tucks it down and, and picks up a first down. Just the 45th attempt all season long. They're forgotten. Dalen Land makes the stop for Bryant. Now, you know North Little Rock does not score quickly. So time starting. You start to look at that clock now. You normally, you know, 308, 307, not a big deal. And it's not yet. But you start to think they're going to have to maybe pick up the pace just a little bit. 
They'll keep it on the ground with Thomas, and Thomas barely gets positive yardage. Bryant right there again. Kyle Green makes the stop for the Hornets. It will be a gain of one. Stay tuned for the AET and Halftime Show with Ed Leon, AETN's Chief Operating Officer. He's going to feature Conway High School's Reed and Greg Hughes and how Conway is tackling cancer. One thing that's really interesting, Scott, Bryant's just taken Braylon Battles and going one-on-one with Derrick Rose on the outside. You don't see that a lot of times in high school football. That shows the amount of confidence that Bryant's and Buck James and company have in their defensive back. Second down and nine. Cotton, no time to set up. Cotton will not shake loose. And he's sacked back at the 30 by Kyle Green. That is a loss of 11 on the play. And there's a timeout called by Bryant. You're starting to see the Bryant defense will themselves in this football game, especially in the passing game. They're starting to get to Cotton really whenever they want to. They see it's not a running play. They're, they're, they're pinning their ears back, and they're coming after the North Little Rock quarterback, and more times than not, they're getting to him. Helps when you're really not touched coming off the edge as well. <laughs> and he wasn't, was he? Yeah. I would have been a really good defensive end if nobody blocked me too. Well, they got to Cotton four times last year in the state championship game. So Bryant knows how to bring pressure. The strength of this defense is the linebacking core. That's what Buck James told me earlier this week, but they obviously are good from 1 through 11. And the defensive line has had a nice game, especially Kyle Green getting through there. How about a big special thank you to Corky's Ribs and Barbecue for catering. They have restaurants in Little Rock and North Little Rock taking care of us up here in the press box. So North Little Rock faced with this long third down again. They're one of six on third down. Cotton's two of nine. This is a big play. 29 yards and three picks. Yeah, this is a big play for North Little Rock. You can't turn the football over. Bryant burns a timeout there, 208 left. More than likely, Bryant's going to get the football back with a chance to score, but you can you have to make sure they drive the length of the field. You can't afford another miscue. And Cotton surely was told, hey, if it's not there, throw it away. Got to. They're going to keep it on the ground, and Cotton is going to lose yardage again. He's not going to get credit for the tackle on that one, but Kennedy Miller made that play. The defensive end stayed at home on the option read. He forced it back to the inside, and Bryant takes her another timeout. That, Probably going to add some more time to this. They let it run down to 153, but I bet this is going to creep back up to closer to two minutes. Austin Bailey with the sack for the Hornets. Well, maybe not. We're not going to count that I was wrong on that one. It wasn't a review. Oh, I mean, it was right. 202 yep. back on the game clock. Yep. Hate when that happens. And they did, 202. Put back on the game clock. So Bryant will have one timeout to work with when they get the football back. Let's go down to the field to check in again with Eric Sullivan. Eric? Yeah, here we go, uh, Scott and Bobby. We've seen these pop up all over college football. Uh, I know uh, the Greenwood Bulldogs had their uh, turnover chain. This is the turnover belt for the Bryant defense. Uh, Kyle Knox getting that third interception already for the Bryant Hornets as they hold that 14-0 lead. Hey, how do you put this on? Show me how it's done. <laughs> all right, Scott and Bobby, the Bryant fans are loving all this defense from the Hornets. I think they're smelling blood, Eric. They're smelling blood. And this is a key, key possession here, Bobby, with a 14-0 deficit. If North Little Rock allows Bryant to go down the field and score here, it's really trouble time. Yeah, this is the, the final two minutes. You see it at any level of football. This is back-breaking time. If, if Bryant can put some points on the board here right before the half, it could be all she wrote. Ooh, and they nearly got to the punt, and I think maybe they did get a piece of it, but they hit him late, and yeah. there's going to be flags all over the place. Yeah, that's that, that's going to be 15 yards for sure. We got a couple flags. They're calling. They're saying it's tipped, or at least the Bryant coaching staff's pleading that it was tipped. Here's the call. Running into the kicker. kicker. Defense. Defense. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, fourth down. That doesn't help much if you're North Little Rock, so they'll just have to kick it again. That's a big break for Bryant. Not a pretty punt, but just to call that running into the kicker and not roughing. 
Yeah, and I think that was just the pressure is the reason the punt came off like it did. They, it doesn't yeah. look like they got a piece of it. Yeah, it looks nasty when you slow it down, but not a lot of contact there, and the punter uh, did what he was supposed to do, took the big flop. Metters back deep to return the punt of Josh Beck. Beck gets this one away. Metters backpedaling. He's going to take it at the 27, and he has nowhere to go. Good coverage by North Little Rock. That's a big penalty now. You look you look at the, the flip and field position. Instead of Bryant getting the ball on the North Little Rock side of the 50, they're all the way back inside their own 30. So they're going to have to march the length of the field and do it in a minute 46. Well, Jamie Mitchell, the North Little Rock coach, says with, when referring to Brian, it's kind of like your wife. You know him so well because they've played so often. Seven, you, seventh meeting in the last four seasons. It's crazy, isn't it? But North Little Rock won the majority of those early contests. Now it's the flip-flop, and Bryant is at the king of the mountain. The championship last year, a win 35-21 to on November 1st of this year. And they're trying to go up three scores before halftime. Two-minute offense underway, and we've got a flag down on the far side of the field before the snap. Out of the snap, offsides, defense. Five yards, still first down. Kind of tells you what you that Bryant thinks of their offensive line. They've got a pair of sophomores to tackle. Will Diggins, number 54, and Brooke Edmondson at number 60. They're getting nobody in the backfield to help them protect. You're trusting your two sophomore tackles to, to block one-on-one -on -one and at the biggest stage in, in Arkansas high school football. So it's first and five for Bryant to start this drive. They have two timeouts, and that pass deflected. I think they hit his arm as he was unwinding on it, and Bryant fortunate that one hit the turf. Now the the... The clock, the scoreboard says they have two timeouts, but didn't they take two timeouts? Yeah, they, they, they burned the two timeouts on that previous So drive. they just got one timeout yeah. remaining. And okay. Then that was the old line curse there. I talked about how great and with the faith they had, and North Little Rock gets a little pressure on they the did. edge. It's my bad. Got to take care of my former offensive lineman, my fellow guys up front. So it's going to be second and five. Ledbetter sends five wide here. Trips to the right. Two to the left. And he sets up. Again, pressure, and his face mask is grabbed. The flag is going to come, and Ledbetter's going to get a nice gain. He's got the first down. Yeah, that's going to be 15 added on to it. And that was a, a grab, a head snap. Lucky his head's still attached, but that's going to be a big first down and a big gainer out towards the mid midfield. Six-yard gain, so he's got the first down and had his face mask pulled. During the run, personal foul, face mask, defense. 15 yards at the end of the run. First down. Again, it's not the number of miscues that North Little Rock's making. It's the timing of these penalties. Extending drives, ending drives. And that time, it's a hustle play. You're never going to you know, fault your players for that. We've got to have a little more body control because that's a free first down and kind of a dangerous-looking play for Ledbetter, the quarterback for Bryant. The Hornets led 13-0 last year at halftime. They're up 14-0 now. 90 seconds, and the clock is moving. One timeout for Bryant, and they're in the plus territory after the penalty is marked off. Ledbetter. Completes it to Ahmad Adams in a good open field tackle that time for North Little Rock by Abram Terry. Yeah, they don't throw it to the running back a lot this year. Just 12 catches coming into it tonight. 105 yards, about 8.8 .8 per, per catch for the big running back. Hornets content to let the clock move here. Hanging on to their timeout. Four wide out set to the left here. On second and six. And a rush coming on. Ledbetter's just going to have to throw it away. Let's see if that going to call to intentional grounding on that. Yep, there's a flag down. Rashad Muhammad with the pressure. And Ledbetter drops it off into the turf. Normally when the, the head official throws the flag, that means he wasn't out of the tackle box. But we'll have to wait and see if they, after a little conference, they agree with that call. Now we'll see. This may be hit the... Quarterback. Intentional late. grounding. Nope, it's intentional Offense. grounding. That penalty is five yards from the spot of the foul. It also carries a loss of down. It will be third down. That is a big, big penalty yardage-wise. Yeah, that really changes the complexion of this drive with one call. So now you're faced third and a lot. 
And now if you're Bryant, you're going to have to worry about maybe even force North Little Rock to make a timeout, maybe a draw, maybe a quick quick hitter on the outside, a screen pass, because there's not many plays in the playbook that you draw off on third and 25. North Little Rock crowd being urged to get loud for this third down. Ahmad Adams is the back with Ledbetter. Throwback he's going to throw a throwback screen to Schrader. Schrader fumbles the football, but he picks it back up. And he's going to be down to the 36-yard line. Let's see if North Little Rock calls a timeout. Yeah, Abram Terry over there to kind of snuff that one out, and North Little Rock does call a timeout. Really well set up play for Bryant. I like the play call, but even better defensive execution by North Little Rock, and it was Terry who forced the football out. Well, North Little Rock didn't call that right away. They, they let a few ticks off the clock before they did call the timeout. Let's see if that matters. With 36 seconds now, they're going to get the football back. Uh, you mentioned it earlier in the broadcast, Scott. North Little Rock not exactly a quick striking team. So 36 seconds unless they hit a big play in the passing game. It be really tough for them to march the length of the field. Well, you have to feel like that that was a game saver for North Little Rock for the moment because right. the way this game had been moving, if Bryant had scored to go up three touchdowns at halftime and they're going to get the football first in the That's third right. quarter, that would be a difficult task for North Little Rock to say the least. Yeah, get big plays in the in the final minute or two of a half is is really big because you go into the locker room either feeling really, really good about yourself or, or feeling down about yourself, and that's why scores right before the half really at any level are so important. Nice nice defensive stand by North Little Rock, and we'll see if their offense can take advantage even though not a lot of time on the clock. Devin Larf is back deep. Let's see if he can get a good return for North Little Rock and give them good field position. They're going to get pretty good field position anyway. Larf calls for the fair catch at the 34-yard line. So 34 seconds for North Little Rock, two timeouts. A couple things here are important, Scott. He's already thrown three interceptions. Kareem Cotton cannot throw it to the guys in blue. He try to win first down, maybe a screen, maybe a tunnel screen to, to battles coming back across the middle because they've, they've pretty much bottled him up since that first drive. North Little Rock did score on a screen pass to Thomas last week up at Bentonville, so maybe try to get the ball to Thomas in space. Cotton looks to the sidelines. And he's going to change the play call. Still time on the play clock. It's just now under 10. They're going to keep it on the ground with Thomas. He shakes to the outside, but he's got nowhere to go. He's rolled up by Derek Rose for no gain. I don't know if they're going to call a timeout. Yeah, they may be content. Yep. Interesting. They keep it on the ground after they call the timeout before the punt, but they're going to let the clock run out. Yeah, they're going to be content to take a 14 nothing deficit to the half. Well, you can't blame them. Your quarterback's thrown three interceptions, and that's how it was going to get done if you were yep. going to score in the last 36 seconds. Yeah, that's a nice job by the Bryant defense. They're going into the locker room feeling pretty good about themselves. They give up about 50 yards on the first drive of this football game and giving up 81 total for the half. So Bryant's defense playing really well, forced three turnovers, forced some, some timely miscues as far as penalties are concerned for North Little Rock and the defending champs playing like the defending champs. Well, we mentioned it was 13-0 at halftime a year ago. It's 14-0 this year. So North Little Rock's defense has to feel pretty good about a team that scores 45 a game, only getting 14. But Bryant's defense, it's done the job all year long, and they've done it halfway home here in the 7A state championship game. We are. Seven tackles for a loss, two sacks by this, by this Bryant defense. Let's go down to Eric Sullivan on the sideline. All right, uh, Coach Buck James, uh, I know you like the lead tw uh, 14 to nothing. You like the turnovers you've gotten, but I think there's some things you can adjust to at this halftime, right? Well, there's a lot we can do. We're really sloppy, you know, and I think both teams have been sloppy. Uh, I think they're playing hard. Maybe they get some jitters out, but we've got to be better on offense. We haven't uh, – uh, clicked on offense. Our defense is playing great, and, uh, you know, their defense is playing great. We just got to make sure that we uh, clean up our messes a little bit, uh, take advantage of our opportunities, and put some points on the board. And if we'll do that, we got a chance to be uh, win this game. But if we don't, we're going to get our tails beat. What has uh, North Little Rock done on defense to maybe slow Ledbetter and company down? Well, they got dudes. 
They got dudes <laughs> over, uh, on top of dudes. And, you know, I don't know any people block six and seven, uh, but those two guys are free riding to the quarterback, and we've got to do a better job. we got some sophomores up there trying to block them, and uh, when you got a dude versus sophomore, dudes win a lot of times. Coach, good luck <laughs> in the second half. i got a couple of dudes up in the booth named Bobby Swafford and Scott Inman, so there you have it. We'll get up, uh, catch up with Coach Mitchell. Uh, they got adjustments to make on offense as well. We'll see you guys in a little bit. Hey, i got to say, Bobby, you did a great job <laughs> in the first half, but that commentary, I think, topped you. Yeah. That was, uh, that was pretty much right yeah, on the well, spot. We, we may be some dudes, but we're not a dude like <laughs> Keith Green and Rashad Muhammad, the two no. guys, number six and seven, like he mentioned there. They're, they're the reason North Little Rock's still in this football game. It is a defensive struggle here in the 7A state championship game. Stay tuned for the AETN halftime show with Ed Leon, AETN's chief operating officer, as he features Conway High School's Reed and Greg Hughes and how Conway is tackling cancer. You're watching the state football championships on AETN Sports. As time passes and the years go by, change is something we all experience. But no matter how the world changes from year to year, the one thing that will never change is the true meaning of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. May your holidays be filled with joy and blessings. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Everett. Hi, Roger Scott for Big Red Stores. Big Red Stores is proud to support high school athletics and to sponsor these high school championship games. Over 40 Big Red Stores are located throughout Central Arkansas, each one staffed with our team members who have participated in games, marched in the band, or led the spirit teams in cheers. And now we are pleased to bring families, schools, and communities together. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Enjoy the games. Well, the defending state champion Brian Hornets lead it 14-0 over the charging Wildcats in North Little Rock. It could have been much worse. The Hornets got started slowly with two three-and-outs, and the Wildcats, Bobby, have turned it over three times, all on yep. interception. So you got to figure, as rough as this thing looked in the first half yep. for North Little Rock sitting in the locker room, they got to feel pretty good about what the scoreboard They've says. They've got to feel really good about holding a Brian offense that's averaging 45 points a game to just really two drives. Four plays in the first half is what Bryant was able to hit. Four defensive breakdowns through 24 minutes. You're going to take that if you're North Little Rock, but the problem is the other side of the football, Bryant's got some dudes as well, as yeah. Buck James said. They're, they're forcing turnovers. They're making Kareem Cotton uncomfortable in the pocket, putting them in obvious passing situations, which is going to be a victory for the Bryant defense more times than not. Yeah, and I think that was a big key for North Little Rock's defensive success in the first half as well. Austin Ledbetter didn't exactly have much time to set his feet. He didn't. And, you know, North Little Rock is bringing no pressure. I mean, they're getting it done with those guys up front. They're in a three-man front. They're letting those guys take advantage of some young offensive linemen for Bryant. The two tackles are sophomores. We talked about how much trust that Bryant had in him. Well, North Little Rock may question that trust coming into the locker room and into the second half. Yeah, we talk about the skill players because they're the ones that get the stats, but this game is always still one up front, and you figure the way this thing started, North Little Rock kind of got the push early from their offensive line. Bryant's defensive line kind of pushed back, and it's really the defensive line that's winning the football game on both sides. It really is, and you ask yourself a lot of times, what's the difference between upper echelon football, average football, and bad football? It's all up front. Mm -hmm. It's whether the offense or defensive lines, and when you can have sustained success up front, and more times than not, you're going to have sustained success in the win-loss column. And we'll talk about this a little more, a little bit more when we come back on the back end and get ready for the third quarter, but when you talk about what's going to happen here in the second half, you just feel like North Little Rock was one-dimensional offensively yep. last year. They've been one-dimensional for the most part this year. Coach Buck James told me they're getting a little bit more balance, but you can obviously see Cotton struggling throwing yeah. the football. And what they, are they going to do? They tried to come out and throw the football a little more than you expected them to. Not nine or ten up passing attempts is a lot for a whole game for North Little Rock, let alone the first half. But they know that North Little Rock is going to You'll be forced to throw the football. Bryant's going to stack the box. They're going to say, you know what, you, if you're going to beat us, you're going to do it through the air. And right now, Bryant's winning that battle. I think penalties was yeah. a big part of this first half for both teams, It too. really was. And timely miscues, the timely turnovers. North Little Rock, right after an interception, turns around and gives the football right back to him. And so those type of things, those momentum changers, penalties on third and long. Gave, got to remember, they gave Bryant a free first down. Bryant killed themselves. They had a drive moving. A personal foul put them way behind the chains. It's those untimely penalties or miscues that can really swing the momentum of a football. Game. Last year, it was a defensive touchdown that sealed That's the right. deal for the Bryant Hornets. We'll see what happens in the second half tonight when we return for second half action in just a little while. But it's still 
halftime here at War Memorial. There's plenty to come. Stay tuned for the AETN Halftime Show with Ed Leon, AETN, AETN's Chief Operating Officer, as he features Conway High School's Reed and Greg Hughes and how Conway is tackling cancer. You're watching the state football championships on AETN Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Cherokee Nation, our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Hey, welcome inside Halftime at AETN Studios. I'm your host, Ed Leon. We're hoping that you're enjoying the broadcast of the state football finals from War Memorial Stadium. We've got a packed halftime show for you, including the story of a local football family that has turned their personal loss into an inspiring example of hope. But first, we wouldn't be able to do these broadcasts without the partnership we have with the AAA, the Arkansas Activities Association, and everything they do behind the scenes to support Arkansas high school sports. Here to talk about that is the director of the AAA, Derek Walter, assistant director. I gave you a promotion, buddy. Good to no, see you. Good. good to see you, Ed. Thanks for having us today. No problem. Hey, let's talk a little bit about uh, what the AAA does for high school sports. It's a lot of, I think people just don't understand how uh, expansive it is what you do. You know, we get confused with insurance companies and, and you're, you're to help you with your car. Right, and right. So <laughs> the Arkansas Activities Association is the governing body for high school activities and athletics in the state of Arkansas. And we are a, a, a organization made up of our member schools. And so uh, our member schools, we've got over 500 member schools. They make all of our rules um, and, and we just kind of organize those and enforce those throughout the year. And so um, we're probably the most democratic organization there is in the state. Every school gets a vote, uh -huh. and that uh, every August we come together as a governing body, and that's what uh, makes our rules. So that's kind of us in a nutshell. So you're like the um, league. We are the, league. the, the NFL, could, yes, kind of the like NBA. The that's right. Right. That's right. Uh, so talk a little bit about what it takes to put on the state finals at War Memorial. It's got to be an undertaking, right? So we're excited to be back at War Memorial Stadium. We know they've, uh, you know, the parks, uh, state parks department has put a lot of uh, new things there as far as infrastructure, and we're excited to be a part of that again this year. Our staff, obviously it's all hands on deck when we get to War Memorial. Uh -huh. um, and then War Memorial staff, they, they come in and it's going to be a crazy three weeks for them as they host the Razorback game and then our two weekends of championships. And, you know, everything from parking to concessions uh, to manning all three of and the And you the touch floors. all that stuff. We do. Yeah, How we touch a staff? lot of it. A our staff, we're, we're about, uh, we have about eight directors and about four to six of us will, will touch the finals. So um, it's, 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 like I said, a lot of us there yeah. and a lot of us working a lot of long hours. Well, uh, I don't know if people know, you're also involved in the Quiz Bowl, which we do here That's on right. AETN. Activities. And you've got a new, I think, super exciting sport that you're, uh, you're bringing into Arkansas. Talk about that a little bit. So this is the second season for eSports in the state of Arkansas. Yeah. We're excited. We partnered with a company called Play Versus, mm -hmm. and they're, uh, they're a company that specialize in high school eSports. And, and so we're going around. We had over, um, over 100 schools participate and over a thousand students and so our goal in esports is to touch students that, that don't you know aren't in the band and don't play football yeah um touch a new student that now they can participate in something right and we're excited about that you know particip participation rather um we see higher grades higher attendance 
um, and better Absolutely. behavior. So we're, we're excited about eSports. All e right, mom and dad, it's okay. They can play, they can right. play some video games right. out after school. So this is our second year. Uh, together yes, uh, during uh, doing the uh, the sports championship finals, AETN and the AAA. Uh, how's it going? How's it going so far? What we do you think? What's been the reaction? First year. You know, I know uh, we got to know each other, you and your staff, Tanisha and Dwayne, and, and all of AETN Sports have been great to work with as, as we kind of start this new chapter of, of televising the state championships. And our first year, just tons of positive feedback from the state. You know, before we had had a TV broadcast, but we were isolated in certain parts of the state. Right. And so now we reach almost 100% of it. And we just had excellent feedback. Statewide. And we're expanding, right? That's right. Tell we them. are. We are adding baseball and softball this year to our lineup of championship sports on AETN. And we're we're excited. I know from the beginning that was kind of our long-term goal was to kind of to branch yeah. out and had our first year under our belt. And I know uh, here at AAA it's been, it's been great uh, to have it on AETN. All we right. thank you guys. Hey, listen, we thank you for the partnership. Thank we couldn't you, do it without you. Stick around for a minute uh, because I want to tell folks about an opportunity uh, for membership that we have here. Uh, it's called the AETN Sports Booster Club, and that it helps support these broadcasts that we have of the state finals, like Derek just mentioned, in football, basketball, baseball, and softball, as well as the Arkansas sports stories that we're going to air during the games. Uh, so we have two levels of support. Uh, one we're calling the Rookie Membership for $35. It's your opportunity to help us uh, keep these broadcasts on the air. And you get, for this, this uh, membership, you get uh, a choice of some gifts. Uh, we have thank you gifts. We have a whole variety of them that you can choose from. One, the one on the bottom is a blanket, which is pretty cool. And a year of the AETN magazine that keeps you looped in on everything happening on Arkansas Public Television. And then we also have the All-Star Membership. Now, this one is $60, includes all the benefits of the Rookie Membership, plus a one-year subscription to AETN Passport, which is a member benefit that allows you to stream all your favorite AETN and PBS programs on demand on any device you want, anytime you want. Uh, in fact, we have a clip right now to show you what's on AETN Passport right now this month. This month in Passport, your on-demand library of the best of PBS. We're all back together and we're not going anywhere. We've tried to be normal and we just can't do it. Satellites orbiting the Earth can look down at our planet in extraordinary detail. These and other shows are available with Passport. Become a member of this PBS station, sign in, and start streaming today. All right, here's how you become a member of the special AETN Sports Booster Club. You go to aetn.org slash sports. Or call us, 1-800-662-2386. That's 1-800-662-2386. Or do it online at uh, aetn.org slash sports. Hey, Derek, thanks for coming by, man. Thanks, All man. right, Appreciate, Appreciate it. All right, the story we're about to show you is a profile of Reed and Greg Hughes of the Conway High School Wampus Cats. And it's more than a football story. It's the story of a family, their bond, their deep loss, and the memory they honor one tackle at a time. It's a unique feeling. There's no other wampus cat in the world. A six-legged blue cat, you don't get that very often. They fight their guts out every snap. Well, you can set goals of winning five or six games, but there's no sense in all that. Your goal is going to be to win it all. Well, it's great having him as a coach, and you know, he's really good at splitting it between home and the field. So if he's mad at me in the field, he's good at not carrying it all the way home and getting mad at me at home. But there's those times that you can tell he's yelling at you as dad and not coach, and those are the scary ones. It's fun. It's fun dealing with him. But sometimes it's a challenge because you got to balance that dad and son aspect of life. But uh, my wife always told me when I got home, you stop. That's it. You let it go. So I did, and I do. I 
know, she was the biggest fan I've ever had. You know, she was the biggest supporter and just the most inspirational person I had in my life. And she kept me pushing through whatever I had. And uh, she gave me strength that I can't even describe. <sighs> He's so strong. He spoke at FCA out here on the Field of Faith night. And he spoke about his mom, about the fight and the battle. And no matter what's going on in your life, you know, you've, you've got God there to fall back onto, to help you, to pick you up. You know, he told the story a year ago to the day, she was sitting in the stands, sick, not feeling good, wrapped up in a blanket. And that's just the way she is. Well, she was always gonna be there for whatever they did, any kid did. She never missed a thing, sick or not. My daughter, she's an extremely strong human being. When my wife was diagnosed with cancer, she was at Arkansas State. Then when we figured out we gotta get some treatments, Haley had come to us and said she had already changed. She was going to UCA, she'd already fixed her scholarship, she'd already taken care of everything over that Christmas break to get to here, to be home, to help. Well, it's been hard. Um, well, for 25 years of coaching, when the game's over, I'd turn around and she's walking on the field to see me. That smile, win, lose, or draw. She had that smile to come hug me, give me a kiss. But she was the most encouraging person around us. Well, right before she passed, she told me, uh, go hit someone hard. And uh, that's, that's what I've tried to do. And so for every tackle that I get on the field, there's donations made by sponsors towards cancer research in Arkansas. I'm the upwards of 100. So I think, I think there's been a lot of donations. That's been amazing. Reed finished the season with 170 tackles. Uh, that website again is conwaytacklescancer.com. All donations benefit the American Cancer Society. Kim Hughes was a big supporter of the Conway Wampus Cats and touched everyone around her. Her legacy lives on through her family. All right, that's going to do it for us here on the Halftime Show. Thank you for joining us here at AETN. On behalf of the entire studio crew here at AETN, I want to thank you. And we're going to send you back to War Memorial Stadium for the second half. I'm Ed Leon. Thanks for joining us. War Memorial Stadium as we get set for the second half about a minute and a half away now Bryant is back out onto the field and the charging Wildcats are coming out of the tunnel even as we speak in a moment we're going to go down and check in again with Eric Sullivan but before we do that we want to take a moment to honor our 2019 football scholar athletes we always do this we started doing that last year one from each team and we'll start with Bryant High School and Tanner Wilson he's an offensive lineman for the Hornets and his field of study will be construction management his GPA in high school 3.7 congratulations Congratulations to Tanner Wilson. He was the only returning starter this year, by the way, on the offensive line for the Bryan Hornets. And for North Little Rock, Mason Carlin, also an offensive lineman. We're honoring the lineman today. I like it. Field of study engineering, and his GPA is above four. Congratulations to Mason and Tanner as our football scholar athletes of the 7A state championship game. Wildcats got a little work to do, and they're going to have to play defense first here in the third quarter. The Hornets leading it 14-0. We're awaiting an interview with Jamie Mitchell, the head coach of the Charging Wildcats, and we will be taking you down to the field as soon as we are told that Eric has that available. In the meantime, we'll take a look at a few of these stats from the first half. What really jumps out to you, Scott, is the way Northern Little Rock is really struggling to get anything going on the ground, running the football just 43 yards rushing for North Little Rock. Their workhorse, Brandon Thomas, got 14 carries. was what you would expect from their workhorse in that first half. Only 2.2 yards, a carry, just 31 yards, and that's really the story of this football game so far is Bryant's defense ability to shut down the power running game of North Little Rock. Yeah, the rushing yards, pretty even. First downs, even, but the passing yards yep. is where you knew Bryant would have the advantage, but that has certainly played itself out here in the first half, and we talked about the importance of third down conversions. Now, Bryant is 0 for 4. But they have done a good job in the last two and a half meetings now against North Little Rock, really getting off the field on third down. 
Yeah. You see the seven tackles for a loss for Bryant. That's putting North Little Rock in unadvantageous positions and causing them to throw the football. And you see the turnovers for North Little Rock. Three interceptions, two of which resulted with Bryant at the at, with the football at midfield or better starting field position. And that's how their points have come. Well, we've had some time added on to the clock as the North Little Rock squad came out right about the time the clock hit zero. So they put three more minutes onto the clock. So we still have a couple of more minutes now until we start the third quarter. But, you know, we we talked about picking up on this when we came back, Bobby, about what does North Little Rock do? You, you don't have a quick strike offense. Your quarterback has thrown three interceptions. Yep. But you're going to probably at some point have to rely on his arm again in the second half if they're going to get back in this football game. They, they obviously are not down so far that they can't run the football. Right. But at some point, they're going to have to use the passing game to some success. Yeah, they're, they're, eventually, they're going. To, you're, you're exactly right. Kareem Cotton's going to have to figure out the passing game for North Little Rock. But the key to making that a lot easier, get the running game going. And that's going to open some things up with play-action pass. If they can get Thomas going, if they can go back to Aaron Sims, the big fullback. Maybe Johnny Lewis gets into the act. North Little Rock needs to get the ground game going. That's going to open up a whole lot more because when it's third and long, Bryant knows you're going to throw the football. You know, the trouble with choosing to throw on first down inefficiently, inefficiently, then you're on second and ten. But sometimes it looked like North Little Rock would get some good yardage on first down, but on second down throw the football and then they're faced with third and long again. Yeah, they, they, won, they did a nice job of winning first down, but yeah. you're exactly right. You know, when it's working, stick with it. I understand what they're doing. They know that Brian expects to run the football, so they're changing the playbook, trying not to be predictable, a little self-scouting going on. But if it's working, you keep going to it and you keep, keep yourself ahead of the chains. Well, you heard Buck James at, at halftime. He was not happy with the offensive performance for Bryant. He said they were getting whipped on the line and not giving Ledbetter time to throw. How do you deal with that in the second half? Well, I think, you know, you, you go with what's what's working. And if you're Bryant, you could just try to run the football as well. They're not having a lot of success, but they've also only attempted to run the football 10 times, which is a little surprising with the numbers that you see. They've been kind of a, a 65-35 type of offense, and they're getting away from that 15 passes compared to this 10 runs. You'd like to see Bryant try to go to Adams, try to go to Anderson a little more. They don't want to shorten the game. They want that quick strike offense. But that's what's been successful for the most part when they have attempted to run the football. All right, we're about set to start the third quarter. Trayvon Heron, one of the deep backs for Bryant. And this will be the first kick of the night for Liam Selhorst. He missed a 45-yard field goal earlier in the game, but North Little Rock, since they haven't scored, they haven't kicked off. Heron stands at about his own nine-yard line. Looks like a, some sort of hold up on the other side of the field. Now it looks like we're ready to go get the second half underway. This is going to go to the left side and fielded by Miles Aldridge. And Aldridge makes the 25-yard line. And actually with a late surge, we'll get out closer to the 26. That's going to be a 19-yard return. And that's where Bryant will start their first series. Now, this is the fun part of football. You have a chance to stand up here from the vantage point. You're at home watching it on television. You can see the adjustments that these two teams are going to make. What Bryant really did had some, a lot of success on in the first half or some crossing routes. They're getting Schrader going across the middle, getting Jake Metters going across the middle. We'll see what they stick with that or what I think they should do. Of course, they didn't ask me. Run the football with Ahmad Adams. And Ahmad is back out there. Split his time with Anderson in the first half. On the RPO, it's led better to throw, and he's got nobody open. He throws it away after a late rush. He had time to get rid of the football. Didn't have any where he wanted to go Jordan with Owens. it, and then Abram Terry pressured him. Yeah, a really nice job there by Owens. I don't know if he was a spy, but as soon as he saw the, the old play action read there, he was one on one with the quarterback. And Owens a little shape, uh, late push there, sent a little bit to the turf. Second and ten. Adams again, the running back. That's Jake Matters in motion. 
Ledbetter to throw again. Has good time this time. And he goes deep to the midfield marker, and it is incomplete. Traven Heron. I'm sure he came down with it out of bounds, but I don't think he came down with it at all. Yeah, nice job by David Smith. He was there, got his head around, had a chance to make a play on the football, and now Bryant on their opening possession of the second half facing the third and long. Yeah, that was good pass coverage by David Smith, the senior. And Bryant, 0 for 4 on third downs tonight. Faced with a third down and 10 on the opening possession of the third quarter. Five wide for Ledbetter. Sets, fires complete, but it's short to Ahmad Adams, and Adams still not down. No, they are going to call it down there. The whistle did blow. It's only a four-yard gain. He spun out of it like he was still up, but Kevin Scorza will bring him down after a minimal gain of about three or four yards, and it's going to bring up a punt Really nice, Brian. Really nice play in the open field by the senior defensive back. But giving up about 40 pounds there on the on the on the roster, but able to get Adams on the field or at least stop his forward progress. <laughs> Did you see that on the replay? Yeah. I don't know that he was yeah. down. Well, they blew it dead. And, yeah, uh, that's not on the list of things we can challenge. No, it's not. And Ledbetter's going to stay in the punt. Pretty good kick. Larf is going to field it, bring it back to the 45-yard line. And good field position and a good start for North Little Rock. That's exactly what they wanted coming out of the locker room. Yeah, that's a really nice job by North Little Rock's defense to get the stop that they wanted coming out of the half. In addition, they give their offense really good field position, and now you can go back to the running game. Get Adams, or excuse me, get Thomas involved in this offense and try to get some momentum, try to get some confidence from those big eaters up front and get some push going. Uh, Bryant's defensive line played a good first half. Their defense in general played a good first half. Force three turnovers. I formation as Cotton goes under center, and it's the pitch back to Thomas. And Thomas has a first down. Thomas still on his feet inside the 40-yard line of the Hornets. He's so good after contact. He's so big, so agile on his feet. Again, a Division I prospect going to University of Memphis. He absorbs blows, able to spin out of it, and now North Little Rock quickly across midfield. Austin Bailey made the stop for Bryant, but not before Thomas gets 16. Starting on Monday, you can relive all the action you get to watch tonight of all the state championship games tonight and the two tomorrow. Monday, go to AETN.org slash sports for a complete replay of these broadcasts. Sims, the fullback with the give. And he's got a good gain on first down inside the 35-yard line. This looks like the exact first drive of this football game. It does. You know, give the ball to Thomas, give the ball to the fullback, Sims, up the middle. And again, they're knocking on the door of the 30-yard line. But again, in the first half, they weren't able to finish these drives. We'll see if they can cap it off with the score here. Seven-yard gain to Marion Wilson on the stop for the Hornets. A punishing run of seven yards by Aaron Sims. And the junior's in there at fullback in front of Thomas on second down and short. Here's Thomas again. Cuts it inside. Good move for the first down. And he's inside the Hornet 25-yard line. Just punishing runs. North Little Rock starting to get a little push, and there's not many players on the field in the state of Arkansas, let alone on Bryant, that's going to be able to bring down Thomas by himself. He's going to run through arm tackles. He's going to drag you for a couple extra yards, and that's what he does there And North Little Rock almost to the red zone. Cottrell Wallace gets the stop for the Hornets. And North Little Rock is on the move. Already doubled his first half production. 22 yards in the first half for Thomas. Now up to 55 total. 35 here in the second half. They'll keep it on the fullback. Give to Sims. And Sims this time gets very little. Yeah, that's a win for the Bryant defense. But again, it doesn't take North Little Rock out of their game plan. With the success that they've had running the football, there's no reason to panic now on second and eight. Maybe a, maybe a short nine, if you want to call it that. Just keep handing the football off. You're having success. David Shiflett on the tackle for the Hornets. So 55 yards for Thomas. Sims with 23. Imagine those two, as long as this score stays pretty co relatively close, those two are going to have a busy, busy second half. Curious to see if they stay on the ground here. Second and a long eight, and Cotton's going to throw. Oh, and it's knocked out of, bound, knocked out of the hands, rather, of Johnny Lewis, the intended receiver. Yeah, a little underthrown, but the wheel routes was there for North Little Rock. A really good play call there on the play action, and Cotton just underthrows his guy, and Brian able there to 
to maybe get a hand on it, but that's a walk-in touchdown if the, the ball is thrown perfectly. I'm not sure that it was deflected, though. I, uh, I didn't uh, see it move. At least he got a hand in the way, and sometimes that's all it takes to, to get the, between the eyes and the football of a receiver just enough to, to take it to make it an incomplete pass. And again, now third and long for North Little Rock. Yep. And Buck James told me earlier this week, third down would be the telltale sign of this game. They're one of seven yep. on third down, and they're going to call yep. timeout. Play clock was running, yep. running out, and you can't afford to give up five yards here. So probably a good use of a timeout there. Three minutes into this third quarter, North Little Rock's got a chance to make this thing really interesting. Well, you go back to that second down play call there, Bobby, and I said I was curious before the snap of the football if they'd stay on the ground. I mean, yeah. that's, that's their bread and butter. They've been getting yeah. big chunks of yardage. That's typically a passing down. It is. But, but, and that's what they chose to do. Yeah, it, it was a good play call, though. They went with the play action. They yep. kind of yep. used the, the reverse psychology, if you will. You kind of thought that North Little Rock was going to run the football, and they get the play action pass. Nice uh, wheel route. and Probably should have been a touchdown, but North Little Rock could not take advantage. In the passing game now, we've talked about the three interceptions, but Cotton just two of ten throwing the football, 29 yards. So what do you draw up here? Uh, yeah, you got two downs. I mean, yeah. we, we've seen the struggles all season, and we saw it earlier this game with North Little Rock in the kicking game. So you've got two downs to pick up these eight and a half, nine yards. So really, I'd give the ball to Thomas, make it a fourth and manageable, and maybe he breaks one. Thomas is the tailback. They'll fake the end around, and Cotton's going in zone again. And this time it is caught for the North Little Rock touchdown by Braylon Battles. That's the big play receiver on the outside. Leads them in touchdown catches, leads them in catches, leads them in receiving yards. And they had faith in Cotton to go to his go-to player, and he just pretty much Randy Mosting took the football away right over the top of him. 21-yard score gets North Little Rock on the board. That's a... That's a, that's a big confidence booster for Kareem Cotton. The coach had enough confidence in you to go to you. It makes a, a good throw right at the pylon, but a great catch by Battles. And yeah. Scott, we've got a one-possession game in the 7A state championship, and a lot of people thought this might not be so close. I think you got to give that one to Battles, though, because it was still hung up there a little yeah. bit, but you got a big guy going up to get it. And now Selhorst on for the point after. He drives it through, and with 8.53 to play in the third quarter, it's a one-score game in the 7A state championship. You're watching the state football championships on AETN Sports. Hey, I'm Rick Steves. You know, I don't go anywhere without my passport. Thanks to PBS Passport, you can watch all my travel specials. This exclusive streaming service is just for our members. Not only can you see all my shows, but you can see thousands of hours of your favorite public television shows. Become a member today. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by... The Cherokee Nation. Our people. Our culture. Our history. Our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. Find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. And get up, get updates about the state finals on AETN right on your phone. Text AETN Sports to 31 at 31 at 31. And Scott, North Little Rock about to kick it off right after scoring the game's first touchdown for the Charging Wildcats. And this is about to get interesting. Sellhorse to the right side. It's fumbled by Aldridge. He picks it up. And Bryant will maintain possession of the football, but he's shy of the 20 yard line. That's going to cost Bryant a little bit of field position. Well, you go back to that touchdown catch by Battles. We said in the early going, that was the guy they were going to go yep. to. He was obviously their 
biggest opportunity to connect on a pass play. And hey, you got to credit Jamie Mitchell and the coaching staff. They stayed with it. Yep. They had stayed with their quarterback. They didn't give up on the pass. And Bryant didn't get away from their defensive game plan either. They're going one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. They think they're good enough to shut down this North Little Rock passing game. But that time, the charging Wildcats won the battle and got in the end zone. A little bit of pressure now on the state champs as we go down to the sidelines and check in with Eric. Uh, the message from Coach Mitchell was, guys, we played about as bad as we could on offense. We did not uh, execute the way we're capable of and hold on to the football. And obviously had a real good talk with his quarterback, uh, Kareem Cotton, because he looked very, very confident on that drive. And you described it very beautifully, Scott. Or I think, Bobby, he Randy Moss that one. It happened right in front of me. So we got new life for the charging Wildcats and a lot of football to play. All right, Eric. Thank you. Tanner Anderson with a good run on first down for Bryant. Slayton Clark with the stop, a nine-yard pickup on first. All the success that Brian has had running the football has been outside the tackles. You know, we talk about those dudes. You know, Buck, Buck James, they've got dudes up front, and they're clogging up the middle, but they're having some success getting outside. Anderson's the lone running back now. Next to Ledbetter. And the give again to Anderson up the middle this time, and he'll get the first down. Didn't get a lot, but he didn't need a lot. The sticks are going to move for the first time, a five-yard pickup. That tackle made by Jordan Owens again. He's everywhere. And that's really what you need if you're Bryant. Get your defense on the sideline. Let them get a little, little air, get a little water, get a little rest. Just, uh, Little Rock's got some momentum. Well, obviously, they've got a lot of confidence as well. Ledbetter looks to the sidelines. Now it goes back to the RPO, and he'll swing it out to Anderson. Anderson's got room to run. Anderson to the 50. And Anderson's got another first down ridden out of bounds at the 44-yard line of North Little Rock by David Smith. Kind of a dangerous play. Ledbetter just kind of tossed it out there, and Anderson did a nice play of making the play in space. But again, get the ball to the outside, and that's get your playmakers one-on-one, -on -one, and Anderson able to move the ball to the NLR 44. A 22-yard pickup for the Hornets, and they're in plus territory for the first time in the second half. Led better to throw uh, under pressure, and he lofts it up incomplete. He just had to get rid of it. He was intending it for Traven Heron. Abram Terry unblocked yeah. off the edge, and that's, that's another dangerous pass by Ledbetter. Floated, floated it over his receiver's head. Luckily for him, it was over the defender's head as well. So we've seen a lot of unblocked yep. blitzers from the edge on both sides. That time Anderson missed the blitz pickup off the, the option read, and lucky that wasn't a negative play for Bryant. Second and ten. Empty back set for the Hornets. Ledbetter connects with Schrader. Schrader can't shake the open field tackle, though. He's brought down short of the first down. It's a good gain on second and ten. Abram Terry again there for North Little Rock. It's a six-yard gain, so it's third and manageable for the Hornet offense. Yeah, all the success for the passing game for Bryant has really been in the middle of the field. You know, the hash marks and just a little bit outside that Schrader on the in-breaking right there, able to get a third and short for this Hornet offense. Third down and four. Big play here. Midway through the third quarter. Ledbetter flips it out, connects with Metters. He got a nice block. He's got the first down. Metters into the red zone and spun out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Really well-designed play there. The ball was in the air, and Bryant had a block out in front. Could have been called for pass interference, but that was close enough to the line of scrimmage. A lot of times the officials in a game of this magnitude is going to let you get away with that. And the Hornets, as you mentioned, inside the red zone. 22 yards on the short pass. So now it's the short passing game for Bryant and getting the receivers in space that's worked on this drive. Anderson's back, the lone setback with Ledbetter. It's first and 10 in the red zone. Ledbetter looking for Metters. End zone. Touchdown. Perfectly placed ball on the flag route to Metters. Those two have hooked up now 18 times for a score this season, and that is exactly how you draw it up. They got the defensive look one-on-one, -on -one, and more times than not, Metters is going to win that one just like he did. 17 yards, 
And how about that for an answer from the state champs? That is a big answer drive. All the momentum was on North Little Rock's side. They marched the football 80 yards in just seven plays and a minute and a half is all they needed to take off the clock, and the score is back to two lead. Brock Funk on to put the point after through, and he does. 7.20 to play in the third quarter. And the scoring starting to open up here in the second half. Yeah, it's kind of what happened last year. I believe it was thir- you mentioned it was 13-0 at halftime. Yep. North Little Rock started the second half of the score, made it 13-7. Then North Little Rock kind of made the run. And now we're starting to see a little offense. This is when the halftime adjustments come into play. And also the nerves just have started to settle down. That was a perfect pass by Ledbetter to his receiver. Well, as we go down to Eric, Eric, Coach James told you at halftime maybe they were a little jittery in the early going, and that was the cause for the mistakes for the offense, not so much there. All right, Scott, uh, how about Ledbetter? I mean, he's a guy, you get a a guy like him on your team, he's so reliable, and then before that drive, the coaching staff was talking to uh, Ledbetter and the quarterback saying, Man, just calm down. Do what you've done all year. And then I meant to say Jake Metters, he's his uh, safety belt. He is where he wants to throw the ball when they got to get something done. They proved it right there and now have a two-possession lead here in the third quarter of the 7A State Championship. All right, Eric, thank you. Johnny Lewis on the return for North Little Rock trying to find room on the opposite side of the field. And he does turn the corner but won't get much farther than that. Bryant runs him out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Pretty decent return, though, for the Wildcats. 20 yards on the return. And here come the Wildcats back out on offense again, finding themselves down two scores. Yeah, the, 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 the attitude really shouldn't change for North Little Rock. Five minutes have gone in this third quarter. It's still a 14-point game. So whatever your game plan was coming out of the locker room shouldn't change right here. So run the football, try to set up something with the play action. Thomas is the tailback on first down. Cotton's going to throw. He's got confidence after throwing the touchdown pass. This is incomplete. Same play. Same yep. play they scored. They should have scored on at least earlier on that drive. The wheel routes, that, that time again underthrown. And I don't know if it's windier down on the field than it is up here at the press box. The flags on the uprights are not moving. But a lot of these passes, especially going from our right to left, have been underthrown from Cotton. So they throw on first down. Now it's second down and 10. Thomas still the tailback. He gets the give. Cuts it back and gets it over the 30-yard line. Pretty decent game, but again, it's third down. It's going to be third down and six for the charging Wildcats. You see Cottrell Wallace clap his hands there on the field for Bryant. This is what the Hornets want. Yep, they want, they want North Little Rock in what, they, what appears to be obvious passing situations and the folks that made the short drive, I should say, from Saline County are starting to get behind this Hornet defense. They have been so good all year. 8.9 points per game allowed. Only 187.8 yards per game allowed in their 12-0 season. And they'll give it up the middle to the fullback, and he has got the first down right at the 38-yard line. That should be good enough. That's a big play on third down for North Little Rock. They needed something to go their way, and they stay with with the football on the ground, maybe catch Bryant napping a little bit, but nice job for North Little Rock, and more importantly, it keeps their offense on the field. It's Fred O'Donnell, the 6-foot, 167-pound junior gets the call. Rare carry for him. Does have five rushing touchdowns on the year, and they're going to give it to him again. And this time, there's nowhere to go. Yeah, bottled up. Nice job at the point of attack for Bryant. Trying to stretch it outside. Now, North Little Rock behind the chains again. Kyle Green, the first man there, and a swarm of Hornets. Take him down back at the 38-yard line. That's a loss of a yard. Quick programming note, AETN addresses consumer fraud in the one-hour special. Fighting fraud and scams. It's going to be Monday, December the 16th at 7 p.m. Second down and 11. O'Donnell in there with Thomas again. Cotton to throw. Cotton under pressure from both sides. Gets the football into the hands of Brandon Thomas. 
but he is going to have to fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Really nice job by Cotton, but that was just a jailbreak from the offensive front for North Little Rock. Brian had, again, two players essentially untouched coming from both ends, and just a nice job by Cotton to find his, his running back and, like you said, get the ball back to the original line of scrimmage, but we've got a charging Wildcat down, and that looks yeah, like Thomas. that may be Thomas. Yeah, Thomas slow to get up. He'd had an ankle injury, I believe it was, in the playoffs yep. this year. He struggled to stay healthy for North Little Rock, and he is going to be helped off the field. That is not what you want to see if you're a North Little Rock fan. Yeah, he's got the hand injury from the accident last summer. Mm. Had an ankle injury a week ago. and At least he was able to walk off on his own power there, which is a good sign for North Little Rock. But now they're going to be faced with a third and ten without their most explosive playmaker in the running game. So you got to believe you got to look for number 88, Braylon Battles, who's going to be on the top of your screen. They will stick with the I formation, O'Donnell and Sims in the backfield. And Cotton will go under center on third and ten. But he's going to throw. And he is looking down the sidelines for battles, but now he's going to tuck it and run. And Bryant turns him back right at the sticks. That's going to be close. It is. The old eagle eye is not as good as it used to be. They may have to bring out the chains see where exactly they're at. Stop made by Kyle Green for the Hornets. And they're going to have to measure this one. Maybe Eagle Eye is working. Nope, they're not going to measure. They're going to move him on. I thought he was calling for the sticks, but he says it's a first down. I think Buck James is a little disappointed they didn't call for a measurement on that one. Well, it certainly looked like it was close enough to call for one, but he, yeah. hey, he's a lot closer to the sticks than I am. Yeah. And then again, what opposing coach would not want a measurement in that point? Exactly. So North Little Rock, it hasn't exactly been an impressive drive, but they move the sticks again. And the handoff goes to Sims, and Sims is into plus territory. The junior running back. Right out of his season gets average. five. Five yards a carry for Sims. He's been effective. Hasn't had to touch the football a lot tonight. Six carries, 30 yards. Averaging 4.8 yards a tote this season. Averaging five yards a carry tonight. Tamari and Wilson, the safety for Bryant, makes the stop. He's on the safety. He's making the stop on first down. You like where you are offensively. Brandon Thomas is back into the game now. That's a good sign, and he's going to get the pitch. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, and, boy, Brian is just swarming him. Yeah, nice job. Again, Wilson, though, play safety playing downhill for a, a gain of nothing. But, uh, again, if you're seeing that in your North Little Rock and Wilson's making the play near the line of scrimmage, that's when the play-action pass can be so effective. Cameron Scarlett also right in there for the Hornets as we get down close to three minutes on the third quarter clock. And the Hornets protecting a 14-point lead. It was 14-0 at halftime. Both teams have a touchdown here in the third quarter. Empty set for Cotton on third and five. He's going to scramble, and he's got room to run. Cotton's got the first down and more. He shakes two tackles in the open field. Make it three, and he's inside the 20-yard line. Nice job by Cotton. Bryant dropped everybody and back in zone coverage and allowed Cotton to, to tuck the football and run. We talked about the, his lack of attempts on the season this year. Just, you know, it came into this game attempting only 44 runs, but he did miss a lot of time. He missed about half of the season with an injury, but he's been really effective on the ground. Picks up a first down there for North Little Rock, and now they're in the red zone. Wilson and Knox finally brought him down, but that was some missed tackling there on Bryant's part to allow Cotton 28 yards. 28 yards into the red zone. And the give goes to Sims, and Sims is inside the 15-yard line. That line of scrimmage is starting to tilt a little bit, and they're early having success over the left guard. North Little Rock is kind of at the point of attack there. They're having success with Sims right up the middle. And if you look at the front for North Little Rock, they're not lacking for size. There are some beef eaters, including number 70 for North Little Rock. He's kind of come in and out at times. But he is uh, Braxton Johnson listed at six foot. He's a sophomore, but at 300 pounds, and they're getting behind the big man. Dalen Land made the stop for the Hornets. Second and five, the handoff, Thomas. And Thomas is hit, loses the football, and it's still loose. The Hornets think they've got it. Still waiting and now getting the signal. It's Brian Hornet football. Tamari and Wilson recovers it for the Hornets. They ran it right behind Johnson again, but that time Thomas could not hold the football in mm. the fourth turnover of the game for North Little Rock. 
in less than three quarters of play, and that one may be the biggest because they were knocking on the door. How about this, Bobby? That's only the third fumble for Thomas this season. Yeah, that's he impre- does not cough it up very often. That's impressive when you think about the hand injuries, likely holding the football with one hand. But the, normally the sure-handed running back for, for North Little Rock gives it ball back to Bryant, and that is a major backbreaker for a North Little Rock team that looked like they were about to get back in this football game. So Ledbetter and company back on to try to add to a 14-point lead. And the handoff is to Ahmad Adams. And Adams moves the pile forward over the 15-yard line, gets out close to the 18-yard line. That's going to be a pickup of seven. Rashad Muhammad with the tackle for North Little Rock. Yeah, nice job by Bryant. They recognized the light box. Only five guys inside the tackle box had a couple on the edge for North Little Rock and has outnumbered them and got ahead of the chains. That is a seven-yard pickup, second down and three. You can do a lot on second and three. Again, just five guys in the box for North Little Rock. There, Bryant's doing a nice job spreading them out, and this is a, a perfect running situation for Bryant. Anderson. Bounces it outside. Anderson to the 30. And Anderson over the 35-yard line. Yeah, Brian seeing what the North Little Rock defense is giving them. They're going to drop seven, drop six into, into coverage. We're going to run the football every time. And now Brian's done a nice job moving the ball out towards the 35-yard line. Don't 18 forget, yards. You can support Arkansas Public Media. Visit AETN.org to learn more about our local programming and community events. Or Little Rock's going to have to put some more bodies in the box. Otherwise, Bryant's just going to have a field day of running the football. Again, just five here. Ledbetter moves the pocket, flips it out, caught by Schrader. And Schrader is ridden out of bounds, bumped out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. He'll be a little shy of it, actually, the 44. They're going to give him about eight on the play. With 48 seconds to go here in the third quarter, Bryant's on the move. That's what makes Bryant so dangerous. You can run the football, but if you pack the box, they've got weapons on the outside where Ledbetter can distribute it and and carve you up that way. So it's kind of the the game within the game, and right now Bryant's having some success. Adams back into the game at running back now. They'll fake it to him, and a quick strike on the slant to Metters. And Metters has a Bryant first down. That's what makes the RPO, the run-pass option, so dangerous when you've got a running back as good as Adams is. You've got to commit to him. He'll play downhill, but that leaves the, the area right behind where the linebackers were, right open for a receiver like Metters, and Bryant's on the move. Monty Holmes made the stop for North Little Rock. Metters the leading receiver. For the Hornets tonight, Six. most common target for Austin Ledbetter. They'll give it to Adams, and Adams off the left side gets inside the 45-yard line. You know, it's Ahmad Adams' 18th birthday today, by the way, so he's celebrating by playing a state championship game. It's not a bad birthday. I'll take that over cake any day. He'll be going to Arkansas State. He is committed to play for the Red Wolves. That's going to be the final play of this third quarter at War Memorial Stadium. Hands in the air with all fours for the Bryant Hornets trying to repeat as state champions. And they've got a 14-point lead with 12 minutes to go. You're watching the state football championships on AET and Sports. As time passes and the years go by, Change is something we all experience. But no matter how the world changes from year to year, the one thing that will never change is the true meaning of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. May your holidays be filled with joy and blessings. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Everett. You'll find there's never a dull moment in this house. Welcome to Downton. Heavens, we are quite a party. AETN welcomes Jesse Cook and his Beyond Borders Tour in an exclusive concert on January 11th at Reynolds Performance Hall in Conway. Call or 
or visit us online and get your tickets today. We begin the final 12 minutes of the 7A state championship game and quite, quite possibly could be the deciding drive of the game. If Bryant gets in here as Ledbetter may be swarmed under, and he will be. Boy, they were coming from everywhere there. North Little Rock sending the house, and they get to Austin Ledbetter again. Chris Foster Jr. there that eventually gets him Ledbetter on the ground, but like you mentioned, Scott, a couple guys running free. Uh, Ledbetter, the guy, probably the player of the game defensively, Jordan Owens was the first man to get a hand on him. Well, it's a third down and long. The Hornets only 5 of 11 on third down tonight. Third down and 12. The ball marked at the 48-yard line of North Little Rock. As we begin play in the fourth quarter, Ledbetter fires over the middle, incomplete, and a good defensive play made by the senior David Smith as he connected with Hayden Schrader right when the football got there. A half a step behind that, and he's walking into the end zone. That would have been about a 65-yard pick six. But, again, that was the second time he's made a really nice play on, on the ball in the air, made the one on the far sideline from us, his home sideline. And now Bryant going to be forced to punt. North Little Rock, exactly what they needed. Yep. Stop near midfield, going to get the football back and plenty of time to, to make this one a contest. Well, you had the feeling if Bryant got in here, that's the ball game. Yep. So this is a, for the moment, game-saving stop for the North Little Rock defense. Ledbetter will stay on and punt. And Larf is back deep. He stands at his own 20-yard line. Ledbetter has to get it away in a hurry, and he does. And Larf calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 18-yard line. So North Little Rock hanging around. 30-yard punt. This is one of those drives that's that really make or break. If you're Bryant, you don't mind giving up three or four yards because that means 40 seconds is going to run off the clock. Yep. If you're North Little Rock, you don't mind picking up three or four yards because that's really what your offense is predicated on. So this could be one of those drives, even if North Little Rock puts the ball in the end zone but takes five, six, seven minutes, maybe that's still an advantage for Bryant even though their lead would be cut in half. Bryant beat North Little Rock 27-7 to a year ago here in the stadium. The handoff goes to Thomas, and Thomas will break the plane of the 20-yard line. Minimal gain, only about two on the play, as Bryant had it stuffed pretty well. That's a nice job at the point of attack again by Bryant. They've done a nice job, really, with the exception of the first drive of the first half and the first drive of the second half. North Little Rock hasn't had much success running the football, and as I just laid it out there, a two-yard gain going to cost North Little Rock about 40 seconds. That's a win for the Hornets. 63 yards on the night for that young man, Brandon Thomas. Good to see him back in there after leaving the field with an injury. See that hand taped up. And the pitch back goes to Fred O'Donnell this time, and he's going to lose yardage back inside the 20-yard line. Yeah, we haven't heard his, much, his name much tonight. He's got 62 carries coming into the, to the contest, averaging five yards per carry on the season, but just his third touch of the football tonight, and North Little Rock in the spot where they don't want to be in. That's third and nine. Austin Bailey makes the stop for North Little Rock. I'm sorry, for Bryant. And it's third down and ten. Thomas the tailback. Cotton's going to throw. Bryant with pressure. And they will bring Cotton down at the 19-yard line. He got back to the line of scrimmage. And a stop made by Kennedy Miller. Just a two-man route for North Little Rock. They tried the little play action and, and the spin out by Cotton. But both players were double teamed. Nice job of not making a bad decision. But a quick three and out from North Little Rock. I mean, the worst part of that was on three runs, which means the clock did not stop during that drive. And Bryant should get... Really good field position. Yeah, Matters is standing on the 50-yard line, awaiting the punt of Josh Beck. Matters calls for the fair catch and makes it at his own 47. So Bryant will have good field position there with a 14-point lead. North Little Rock's going to need another big stop from their defense. They got it on the last drive. They're going to have to bowl their neck one more time because, again, another score for Bryant's whether it's a touchdown or even a field goal, likely puts this game out of reach. At the beginning of the fourth quarter, Bryant had outpaced North Little Rock offensively 280 yards to 198. First downs were even at 13. 
passing yards. Bryant had the edge 192 to 59. Yeah, well, the one stat that really jumps out, if I would have told you that Bryant's one for seven on third down, it's really tough to win when you're losing on that on that key down, but they've got a 21-7 lead. A fake to Adams, and the ball is loose. Led better. Can't get it back. North Little Rock will come out of there with it. Jayon Sims for the Wildcats. That is a big play from a player who's listed as a freshman on the roster. And that is the worst possible outcome for North Little Rock, excuse me, for Bryant, but the best possible result for North Little Rock. They've got a short field and an offense that's still got some confidence. We'll see what they do coming out. Well, that was a miscommunication on the give right there. Ledbetter, I think, was trying to give it to Adams, and Adams didn't take it. And the Wildcats are in plus territory at the Bryant 44-yard line. Some confusion looked like North Little Rock had to burn a timeout, and they're not happy because if they would have snapped that, that play, that would have been an illegal formation. They had two eligible receivers lined up on the line of scrimmage at the top of the screen. You can continue the football conversation on all social media platforms. Just use the hashtag AETN Sports. That's a big timeout, Scott. You, you hate to burn them at any point. Now North Little Rock only with one clock stoppage left this last nine minutes and some change, which makes this drive even more important to put points on the board. Well, you go back to that fumble for the Bryant offense. Ledbetter in the exchange with Adams put it on the turf and gives North Little Rock new life. Hornets still... Winning the turnover battle, they have three interceptions tonight, but that's a bad place. There's, all, there's no good place on the field to, for a turnover, but that's a bad place to do it when, yeah. you, when you've just made a defensive stop on the other side of the field. North Little Rock was really back against the wall. Bryant had a chance to put this football game away, could not get the job done there, and now North Little Rock with new life and a new possession. All right, Cotton back out there, looks to the sidelines with Thomas in as his tailback and Aaron Sims, the junior fullback. Cotton to throw, slings it out, looking for battles, and it's knocked away at the last minute by Kyle Knox. Great defensive play by the six-foot junior for Bryant. Yeah, it's a really nice job. They're, they're content, let him go one-on-one. -on -one. Battles has won a couple. The Bryant, the secondary has won a couple. But again, North Little Rock not afraid to take shots, not afraid to show confidence in Kareem Cotton, even though the completion percentage is not very good tonight, just 4 of 13. They have thrown pretty frequently on first down in this game. And now they're faced with second down and 10. Jarrell Rice is the running back. They're going to swing it out to him, but it's errantly thrown by Cotton over his head. And now it's going to be third and 10. Austin Schroeder in coverage is down, actually, on in the secondary. Favoring his left leg. Schroeder, a 5'11", 165 junior. He's going to limp off under his own power. Mm. Let's go down to the field and check in with Eric Sullivan. Eric. Bobby, uh, you uh, thought Brian really could have uh, put that one away, really taken some time off the clock, but give props to North Little Rock. They are still fighting. Uh, they're still trying to scrap their way into this game. And we talk about Ledbetter and the Bryant passing offense so much because he's so good. But that Bryant rushing attack now has to step up. Those big guys on the offensive line, they got to start doing their, ball, uh, get doing their work to make sure that uh, Bryant could kind of eat up some of this clock, 14-point lead. It's good, but you know they want one more score to put this thing a bit, put this one to bed and become back-to-back -back state champs. But I got a feeling North Little Rock's going to scrap until the buzzer sounds in the fourth quarter. Yep, and they're going to go for it on fourth down here. Big stop on third down. Cotton's pass was overthrown, but he's still on the field. You see him there. Yeah, just 4 of 16 passing for North Little Rock. These are not easy for them to pick up, but look for him to go to Braylon Battles, his go-to guy. Fourth down and 10 at the Bryant 44. Yep, he's got a quick kick it. 
Nobody back deep for Bryant. Not a bad call there, but he can't get it to stay. I like Out the, of the end zone. I like the call, though. Yeah. I mean, trust yeah. your defense. The defense has played really well because if you would have told Jamie Mitchell Bryant's got 273 yards of total offense at this point in the football game, he'd probably take that nine out of ten times. North Little Rock's defense is playing well. Trust your guys on that side of the ball to get you the football back in a, in a reasonable manner as far as time's concerned. And you get a three and out, you're going to get the ball close to midfield. All right, so if you're Bryant now offensively, you go for the jugular, or are you keeping it on the ground trying to eat up some of this clock? I think you go. You start with a clock starter, get something going, maybe give the ball to Adams or Anderson, and at some point you've got to try to blow the top off this defense. Anderson, the running back with Ledbetter, and he gets the give. He changes direction and gets the first down. What a nice cutback move by Tanner Anderson. The stop's made by Abram Terry, but... He made a move left and then cut back right, Bobby. Yeah, he's been really impressive. You know, a lot, of, a lot of the talk around the Bryant offense all season has been about Ahmad Adams. You know, he's committed to Arkansas State, but Tanner Anderson really having a nice game here on the biggest stage in the state. Just six carries, averaging well over 10 yards a carry in this football game. Had 54 before that tote, and now, the, again, they're out near midfield. Not a big guy, 5'10", 197. He's a junior, so he'll be back next year. Play fake and a little shovel pass is caught by... Trevian Heron, and Heron gets close to the first down yard marker at the 44-yard line. Stop made by Monty Holmes. Playing the state championship game, I'm not sure I want my quarterback throwing the football like that, but hey, whatever works for you. That's two big first downs for Bryant, because even if they don't do anything from this point, they're at least going to be able to flip field position to make North Little Rock work. If, yeah. If they do get the football back. It'd be very difficult for this offense to go the length of the field. But Bryant would love to come away with this with points and make it a no-doubter. Tanner Anderson again is your running back, and he gets it on first down. And that's a good gain out to midfield, a pickup of about six. We'll call it five, and it'll be second down and five as the clock ticks close to 740 now to play in the game. Jordan Owens makes the stop for North Little Rock. Scott, you ready to save your voice? New for 2020 AETNs, bringing you the high school baseball and softball state championships in May. Get the latest updates by signing up for alerts, aetn.org slash sports. Baumwalker Stadium, Bogle Park, we're coming for you. Got the basketball ones around the corner as well, but oh, by the way, we've still got five more football games huh. in the next couple of weekends here at War Memorial Stadium. Got a lot of semifinal games going on in the smaller classifications tonight. Anderson gets the give again. And, boy, he just pulls tacklers to the 45 of North Little Rock. It's a big first down. That's going to bleed another two or three minutes off the clock, guaranteed, assuming uh, incomplete passes don't happen. That's a way to finish the run by Anderson. Been really, really impressed with him so far. Does this look like a 5'10", 197 kid? It does not. It looks like the kid who wants to win a state championship finishing off that run. Eight carries, 78 yards, averaging almost 10 yards a carry, 9.8. Last year it was Latavian Scott. Yep. That was the star for Bryant as they pounded the football. And now you're starting to see the Bryant offense slow down a little bit, bleed yep. this play clock down. Normally they'd like to snap at 20 25, and now they're looking at 10 seconds on the play clock, and they're just now lining up at the, at the line of scrimmage. Ahmad Adams is in for the running back spot for the Hornets now. And he'll get the handoff. And Ahmad Adams gets positive yardage, but not much. Rashad Muhammad off that defensive line turns him back. And this is where if you're North Little Rock, you've got to start you know, trying to go for the football. Make one guy stacks up the runner, whether it's Anderson, whether it's Adams. And you've got to get everybody else to rally around and try to get that football out. Because now the clock is the biggest enemy of North Little Rock at this point. We talked about those semifinal games. A couple scores for you. In the fourth quarter, Osceola leads Camden Harmony Grove 38-6. Harding Academy over Prescott 42-14 also in the fourth. Gurdon and Junction City. Junction City leads 38-30 in the fourth quarter. And Fordyce leading Salem 38-8. Ledbetter is going to throw deep on the play. And it's incomplete. A lot of... Hands going back and forth between the defender and the wide receiver. No flag down. Schrader can't make the play. Yeah, and the, and the one game that's set already for next week, the 4A state championship game, Shiloh Christian, a perfect 14-0, going to take on Joe T. Robinson, 
That's going to be your Class 4A state championship game. Those two teams have been ranked in the top three all season, and they're going to meet on this field next weekend. So that stops the clock, that incompletion. 5.39 now to play in the game, and Bryant has third down and nine. You mentioned their struggles on third down. Five of 13 on the night for the Hornets. And we're going to get a flag from the defensive backfield. I think it's delay of game. The play clock ran out on the Hornets, and they did. Oh, nope, nope. The, one of the officials said delay of game, but they're going to say they did get the timeout. Timeout. Bryant. First charge timeout of the half. That's a big play coming up right here, because even if you do, say, Bryant picks up two or three yards, Maybe if you're in North Little Rock, maybe you consider using your last timeout. They've only got one. They had to burn a couple on offense earlier in this game, or in this half, excuse me, but you know, those seconds are precious right now. You can't allow a one-yard gain to cost you 40 seconds because you got to believe that Bryant might take a delay a game at this point at this, this juncture of the field and, and just attack it on to where they're going to punt from. Well, we talked about the semifinal games. How about the championship games tomorrow? Got a doubleheader, yep. and it's amazing to me. Five out of the <laughs> six teams playing at War Memorial this weekend played last year for the state championship. We've talked about Bryant North Little Rock rematch. Tomorrow we'll get a rematch between Little Rock Christian and Pulaski yep. Academy. And then Benton returns for back-to-back -back state championship appearances. They'll face Searcy, who managed to oust last year's champion, that's Greenwood. Right. Yeah, Searcy, that, that, that may be the darling of the state. If you live outside of the, uh, the western part of the state, a lot of people like to see Greenwood get beat because it doesn't happen very often. Rick Jones has made a, a second home here at War Memorial Stadium, but congratulations to Cersei. I believe it's their first championship game appearance in 30-some-odd years. Yeah, I think it's 84 was the last yeah. time. Hey, let's go down to the sidelines, check in with Eric Sullivan. Scott, I'm here at the defensive pit. Uh, these uh, uh, During uh, they get off of the field, they get to come see stuff like this right here. Their previous series on a – Laptop, then it feeds into the big screen TV. They can tell the defenders or offensive players what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. And uh, Bobby's probably the youngest one of us. I, I, this is amazing how the equipment has changed for high school football, but you got to give it up to that defensive staff and the defensive players, led by, of course, our man, Cottrell Wallace, who will be a Razorback next year. They have shut North Little Rock down, and they're going to try to do it one more time before this game's over. Starting to feel back-to-back -back state champs here on the sideline as well, guys. They need a first down here. Ledbetter buys time and throws behind his intended receiver, Jake Metters, and Metters can't bring it in, and it's going to be fourth down. Yeah, it really is amazing how much things have changed technology-wise. You flash back 10 years ago, it'd be unheard of to put state championship games on television. It'd be unheard of to be able to watch the game on the sideline. You're using grease pins. You're using marker boards. 10, 15 years ago, you're using chalk. 25 years ago, grass wasn't even invented yet. <laughs> That's when Eric Sullivan was a youngster. A lot better to punt it away. Now he's younger than me, so I'm going to take a little bit of offense <laughs> to that. I didn't point that out. You did, Scott. I know. Well, they saw my beard at the first of the program. <laughs> Larf is back deep to return. Line drive kick. Larf's, oop, did he try to field it? Nope, I guess he didn't touch it. He doesn't act like he did, and it gets to the end zone anyway. He reached for it. Now those two incomplete passes are right there on that last sequence of plays for Bryant's big. It saved North Little Rock at least a minute, maybe a minute and a half of game time. So yep. here we are, 524, down 14 points. Got to go 80 yards yep. right now. Not completely out of the realm of possibility no. for North Little Rock. But this is it. You got to do it here. That's right. You got to score on this possession. Four down territory for the length of the field. Everything in your playbook's probably in play. Look for something to get Thomas in space. Obviously, the passing game has gone through brilliant battles for most of the season and definitely tonight. Kareem Cotton's your quarterback. Thomas is with Sims in the backfield, and they are going to keep it on the ground with Sims, and Sims gets over the 25-yard line. He'll make it out to the 29, so it's a gain of about nine on the play as the clock continues to tick. This game last year was in a very similar situation, if you'll remember. It That's was 20-7, right. to seven, so Brian had a 13-point lead instead of a 14-point lead, and North Little Rock was knocking on the door. They were inside the 10-yard line, if I remember yeah. right, and it was a fumble and a scoop and score by Nate Wallace and a defensive touchdown that set the final at 27-7. to seven. I formation. Cotton's going to throw. He flings it into double coverage, and it's incomplete. Yeah, they saw that one all over. Braylon battles with the out and up, and 
He threw that in the double coverage, and it was well read by the Bryant safety. Austin, Austin Schroeder. Austin Schroeder. Got he, his hands on it. He had that one dead to rights. If Battles doesn't get a hand on it, that's likely intercepted and maybe a second defensive touchdown to put a championship away for the second straight year. Now, that was a great defensive play, and he had come out limping not that long ago, so good to see him back in for the Hornets defense. And now it's third and a couple. They'll give it to the fullback, Sims, and Sims gonna be close. is going to be short. Depending on the yeah, he's going to be short, a little bit short. But like you said, you expect it to be fourth down territory here. Yeah. We'll have to start to see a little more a sense of urgency from North Little Rock, too, even though after they picked up seven, eight yards there on that first down carry. They do give him that's the, a really nice spot. Yeah, I think that is a very nice spot. It's touching the 30-yard line. They're going to say it's a first down yeah. without measuring. Where the official ran in, it looked like it was going to be maybe a half a yard short, but mm. then the nice perk there for North Little Rock, and we'll see if they can start to pick up the pace a little more. They've only got one timeout. Like there's not a whole lot of urgency getting up on the ball and snapping it either. When you need two scores here, the handoff goes to Sims, and Sims will get out of bounds at the 35, 36 yard line. They mark him just shy of the 35, so it's a five yard gain, stopping the clock with 405. Yeah, that's big to get out of bounds there. Nice heads up play instead of trying to fight for that extra yard or two, might stay in bounds. Get over to your sideline, save some time. Brandon Thomas, the running back, on this second down and five play. Low snap, Cotton got it, swings it out to Thomas. Thomas makes a man miss. Thomas has a first down. He's dangerous in space. I like the, I like the idea of getting him the football. Again, a special thanks to Corky's Ribs and Barbecue for catering tonight. They've got restaurants in Little Rock and North Little Rock. You get the ball, your playmakers in, in key moments, Scott. And nice job by Jamie Mitchell and company to get Brandon Thomas the football out in space, and now they're creeping up towards the 50. First and 10 at the 45. There's David Bells now at quarterback. North Big Rock. Low snap again. Bell fires it out to the first down yard marker and Battles makes the catch. He'll move the chains. Let's go down to Eric. Looking at uh, Kareem Cotton, he's had a it looks like a cramp at right in at his right lower thumb part up into his wrist and inner forearm. Uh, the doctor's stroking to try to stretch that out, took the helmet off, but uh, they're doing all they can to get that, uh, get him stretched out and maybe make one last run, but he was in a lot of pain when he came off the field with a very tight muscle. All right, Eric, thanks. So it is Bell in at quarterback, and he drops the football, picks it back up. Now he's going to have to try to make something happen, but he loses his footing way back at the 42-yard line. A loss of 12, and that is a big, excuse me, 14, a big, big play. Now, Bell's played quarterback. He's attempted yep. 113 passes this year, and that's just not, not in mop-up time. He had to fill in for Cotton while the quarterback was hurt for a, lot, a large portion of the first half of the season. But, again, a young quarterback, you know, hasn't played a whole lot the last month of the season, and now you're facing a second and 24 against the state's best defense, and now mm. you're really running the short on time. There's two and a half left. You certainly have three plays to get this. Bell. Buys time, now runs for his life. And he gets barely back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. Yeah, again, just two guys out on the route, and they were on the opposite side of the field in which Bell rolled to. And so when it, once he rolled to his left, there was nobody on that side of the field for North Little Rock, and he tucks it, and maybe the more experienced quarterback throws that one into the front row, saves some time. But again, by the next time they snap this football, we're going to be under two minutes. Well, the Bryant defense throwing their hands in the air, their arms in the air, trying to get the crowd on their feet, and they are. The Bryant Hornet fans are on their feet. They're starting to smell it now as the clock continues to evaporate in front of North Little Rock's eyes. We're under two minutes to go, and then he two scores, and the snap gets through the quarterback's hands, and he's going to be buried back down at the 23-yard line. That's... That may be the ultimate backbreaker right now. North Little Rock not going to call a timeout. They're going to be facing fourth and get out your abacus. 25 plus five. How about 
31 yards there. We're closing in on a quarter mile. Let's just say. I have to do my math out loud there. Not proud of that moment. And they didn't call timeout either, as you mentioned. They're trying to save that one timeout. But at this point, this is your last play. Unless a miracle happens, the Hornets are going to be back-to-back -back state champs. Bell chased, hit, almost got it away, but it's incomplete, and the Hornets will take over on downs. That's a big play because if Thomas can make that play right there, he had a lot of daylight, but Bryant's defense makes the play of the game, and they are 65 seconds away from going back-to-back. We're going to take a break and be back for the final minute five. After this, you're watching the state football championships on AET and Sports. One of the best things about being a community-focused bank like Centennial is that we encourage our employees to volunteer and give back. That's why our bankers are often seen around town involved in activities that have less to do with money matters and more to do with supporting others. From charity events and disaster relief, the Chamber of Commerce and Civic Activities. We enjoy rolling up our sleeves and helping make our community a better place. See for yourself the difference our local commitment can make. More information available at mileandhunterbank.com. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. Now the Brian Hornets in the victory formation as they have downed the first snap and the clock begins to tick. They'll have to do it once more and they will be state champions for the second consecutive year. It'll be a 13-0 season, 17th straight win. And get this number, Scott. They have outscored their opponents by 446 points this season. That is an impressive year by a team that is, in some polls, are ranked in the top 25 in the nation. You've got the scores there. I'm assuming this is their lowest point total of the year. It is. Uh, you got to go with 35 would be the, the previous low total. And there it is. Buck James gets the bath. The final 14 will tick off, and the Bryan Hornets are your 2019 7A state champs. When this season began, Scott, everybody looked to Bryant, the defending state champion. Of course, that's where the conversation's always going to start. Repeating as a champion is difficult. It doesn't happen very often. We saw it last year with North Little Rock. They couldn't repeat. Bryant does go wire to wire as the number one team in all of Arkansas, and they do it in impressive fashion. When I talked to Coach James earlier this week, I talked about that sportsmanship rule that they had imposed 10 times in their last 12 games. And everybody wants to talk about the offense that got that done. But when you look at the way this one transpired tonight, and obviously there's some emotions running a little wild here at the end of this thing. Oh, you hate to see that. North Little Rock is... And Bryant are getting into a little bit of a scuffle here at the end of things. Putting a little bit of a damper on the completion of this football game. But when you look at the way this transpired, the defense, it was the Bryant defense. And my goodness, we're going to have to get a lot of people involved in pushing this apart yeah, this to is, settle this thing down as it's getting ugly out there. Really ugly finish to a really well-played football game. Yes. The coaches are doing a good job of trying to get them pulled apart here. Yeah, you hate to see it, but there have been some punches thrown out there. If they go back and look at this film, it's going to be really disappointing. But uh, Not going to put a black eye on Bryant's. They're going to head over and celebrate their student section, but a really ugly finish to, to a really well-played football game. Well, back to what I was saying, you talk about those sportsmanship rules, and we talked about it at the first of the broadcast. You want to focus on the offense, all the points that were scored to make that happen. But you've got to keep the score down defensively. you had a defense that was allowing just 8.9 points per game coming into this one. You really have to hang your hat and say, if you're Bryant, that's what got you there tonight because it was a night where the offense really wasn't clicking on all sides. Yeah, it's easy to point to a team like Bryant. You see a guy who's committed to play in the SEC like Control Wallace says, okay, that's the reason why. It's, he's not, the, don't get me wrong, he is a very good football player. But there's 10 other guys and probably some reserves in there that had a lot to do with it. If you hold North Little Rock, a team that holds their hat on running the football to 2.7 yards per attempt, 46 rushes for just 123 for North Little Rock tonight. A really impressive effort, and that's why you see a team that gave 114 points all season long. Yeah. No big plays either. Last time yeah. they met, there were some long touchdown runs by Brandon Thomas. Tonight, they got him off the field on third down. They didn't allow too many big plays. Just one play, 28 yards was the longest play for North Little Rock, and that was the quarterback scramble. 
Hey, let's go down to the field and check in with Eric Sullivan. Eric's got Austin Ledbetter. All right, we're with Austin Ledbetter, the quarterback of the Hornets. Hey, man, this game was it was a tough one all the way through, but it really took you all a little bit to get going on offense. What clicked in the second half? You know, we just had to start to run the ball and be physical. You know, the guys up front, they did great. You know, we just had to be physical, and we knew that before the game. And uh, the team did great, man. It's a blessing to be here. It's good as y'all, great as y'all been this year. You knew there was a little revenge on North Little Rock's minds after y'all beat them last year. Emotionally, how were you this week? Uh, I was very calm. You know, I just tried to, you know, keep my team uh, focused on the goal and the win this game. And, uh, you know, they did a great job. You know, we fought hard this game. You guys are a pretty tight-knit group. Is that really what carried y'all to not? Little Rock got it down to 14. North Little Rock got it down to 14-7. And maybe y'all's tightness, group kind of attitude, that helped tonight, didn't it? You know, it's just our worst ethic in the, the summer that, uh, you know, gets us through these type of games with adversity. Uh, you know, it's just us going to work every day, waking up in the morning, having the mindset to win, and, um, you know, it shows. Hey, back-to-back -back state champs, how's it sound? It's a blessing. It's a blessing. All yes, right, sir. Man, go celebrate with your team. Yes, sir. All right. You. We'll check with the coach here in just a little bit, guys. All right, Eric, thanks. We'll go back down to you when you have Coach James. Austin Ledbetter's numbers tonight, 16 out of 29, 203 yards passing, three touchdowns, and one interception. He was sacked three times, and that was something that – but James talked about at halftime. It was those dudes from North Little Rock were getting after him, but he kept his composure, kept his poise, and had a good night tonight. He did, and the set, the offensive line in the second half for Bryant did a nice job of protecting Ledbetter, keeping him upright. And you got to believe Ledbetter, if not his receiver, Jake Metter is going to take home the MVP award. But it really just a nice all-around performance by Ledbetter. And I guess if you're you know a high school football fan and you always want to look to the future, well. Guess what? Austin Ledbetter could be back in the state championship game again next year. He is a junior, and Jake Metters, the leading receiver, six catches, 97 yards. He's the top target. He is a senior. He'll be gone. He had three touchdowns this year against North Little Rock. You see Austin Bailey there, this linebacker. He's the player of the game. It's the Burlesworth Award. It's Coach Tommy Tice. Welcome to the High School Football Hall of Fame. A lot of football games between Huntsville and Harrison. We've got to look to the defensive side as well, as we mentioned, for Bryant. And the top tackler was Austin Bailey. 12 total tackles tonight for Bailey. It's a big, it's a big performance by a big man in the front of that defense. And they're about to get what they came for. I right, saw the analogy today. Today's payday. You work all season long. Today you try to go get paid. And Bryant's about to get paid with some hard work. For the second time in a year. Little Rock receiving the runner-up trophy. Most of their team has already gone yeah, to the it. locker room because of the way the skirmishes broke out at the end of this thing. And here comes the trophy into the swarm of Hornets. Winning a title's tough, Scott. Winning it back-to-back -back in the way they've done it. 17 straight wins and most of it in dominating fashion. And you see the, the 16 wins and now 17 wins. Four of those came against teams in the state championship game. A lot of those Benton, a lot of those North Little Rock. But the most impressive number to me, 15 of the 17 wins during this stretch made the playoffs. And that is called playing really good competition. Some of that has to do with the format of Class 7A where six of the eight teams from a conference do make the playoffs. But... That's impressive. That's as impressive stretch as you're going to find at the largest classification in any state. Hey, and tip your hat to North Little Rock. I'm looking at that score. It's a 14-point point, point differential. That was the same point differential as they played at That's earlier right. in the year. Nobody else got that close to Bryant this yeah. year, and it's a team that was plagued by injuries. They had a lot of suspensions all year long. But they stayed with it and got back to the state championship game. That's still a great story. Yeah, and if you watch the highlights, you're starting to see why North Little Rock's going to go back and watch this film and get really frustrated with themselves. Four turnovers, including one in the red zone, that really cost them a chance to, to pull an upset and win the state championship because they played just as well as Bryant did today. They had a chance to win this football game. It wasn't decided really until that final drive, but four turnovers against anybody at any level is going to make it really tough to win to win the contest, and essentially that's what broke North Little Rock's chances of, of pulling an upset and winning the state championship tonight. When you look at this this team, you mentioned Ledbetter. You got Tanner Anderson, who had a big game 
uh, tonight as well. Eight carries for 78 yards with a 21-yard run among those rushes. He's a junior. He'll be coming back. Hayden Schrader, you saw him catch five balls tonight for 59 yards. He's a junior. You got two sophomores on that offensive line. He'll be to be returning starters next year. Yeah, Ledbetter is named your state championship game MVP. So he's going to be back, and you know, that, that, that's when you, you, you want to celebrate tonight. But there are 15 other coaches in Class 7A right now looking at this Bryant roster. It's like, okay, what do they lose? Do I got a chance to win a state championship next year? And, of course, you're going to start at the quarterback. He's back. Anderson, their leading rusher tonight, coming back. And, of course, and then you go start go to your receivers. Jake Metters, he's a senior. He's gone at least. But Hayden Schrader, he's coming back next year. So, Bryant, the uh, cover not exactly going to be bare. They're going to enjoy this one for a while. And the rest of Arkansas may be having to watch this blue swarm celebrate for a while. We see Buck James coming away from the celebration, getting a few more hugs in, and we will be anticipating talking to him relatively soon. We're going to take a break and come back to wrap things up for more Memorial after this. You're watching the state football championships on AET and Sports. Roger Scott for Big Red Stores. Big Red Stores is proud to support high school athletics and to sponsor these high school championship games. Over 40 Big Red Stores are located throughout Central Arkansas, each one staffed with our team members who have participated in games, marched in the band, or led the spirit teams in cheers. And now we are pleased to bring families, schools, and communities together. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Enjoy the games. Ready to watch the best of PBS anytime, anywhere, on nearly any device? It's easy with the free PBS Video app. Simply download the PBS Video app on your mobile or streaming device. Now you can watch the latest PBS episodes or catch up on the shows you missed. And when you support your local station, you can get PBS Passport, giving you access to more episodes, more specials, more of what you love. Get the free PBS Video app now and stream the best of PBS anytime you want, anywhere you are. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Cherokee Nation, our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. 21-7 the final, the Hornet State Champions again as we go back down onto the field. And Eric Sullivan's with Coach Buck James. Eric, he told you at halftime, North Little Rock's got some dudes. You tell him he's got some dudes, too. All right, uh, we're head coach uh, Buck James, back-to-back uh, -back state championships here on AET and Sports. Uh, this group uh, fought through a lot tonight, uh, but I think in that third quarter, you really kind of separate yourself a little bit against North Little Rock. Well, I, it, well it was a heck of a football game. I, you know, people who like to see rock them, sock them, uh, they got to see it. You know, I've talked about John Wayne football last year, and nobody knows what John Wayne football is, but I'm telling you that right there is the definition of, of John Wayne football. Our kids played their guts out, and it, it was uh, it was a heck of a game. Their kids played their guts out. I, I have a lot of respect for their tailback and their football team and their coaches. Uh, they do one heck of a job. To be here four years in a row uh, takes a lot of courage to keep coming back and keep doing that. And, you know, I told you, uh, the interview a while ago, brothers fight. You know, you don't fight your enemies, you fight your brothers. And uh, those guys have competed seventh time in four years, and uh, it's been a heck of a game every single time we played. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great rivalry. Hey, you've been uh, doing this a long time. How hard is it truly to win back-to-back -back state titles? Well, that's the first time I've done it. I've lost back-to-back -back state titles, so I can tell you how hard that is for sure. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of our kids. They understood the process. Uh, you know, we went to North Carolina earlier in the year and played 7-on-7 seven seven and won the first day. And the second day, we got beat by the teams that beat us. And we found out what it was like to be the, 
the hunted, and uh, that's what we were this year. The entire year, we were the hunted, and it takes a whole different perspective to be that guy than it is to be the guy that's out there hunting for him. Uh, last thing here, this whole side full of blue, bright blue. Uh, it truly is a community thing to play bright football, and you got to be proud of that uh, fan base you got. Well, you wouldn't believe the motorcade and the, uh, uh, the all the people standing on the street when we left. Bright's a great community, you know, and these people have really gotten behind us and supported us, and i got to make a shout out to our parents. Our parents let us coach those kids, and I said it last year, I'm saying it again this year, because I know sometimes they have to shake their head because this guy's crazy, <laughs> and to try to get them to do what they're supposed to do, uh, it, it's a, it, I have tipped my hat to those parents. Congratulations, Coach James. Go celebrate with your guys. So, All right, uh, Scott and Bobby, they've done it again, and back-to-back uh, -back state champs. I, I'm going with the Herb Cowboy here for me, and I'll give you guys the John Waynes. How about that? All right, sounds good, Eric. Thanks for your help tonight, and we are just getting started, my friend. That's a good start mm -hmm. to the uh, championship weekend we've got ahead. Yeah, if that's a, a precursor of what we're going to see tomorrow with the doubleheader with the 5A and the 6A state championship games, buckle up. It's going to be a really entertaining day on AETN. Yeah, another rematch coming your way at 12 noon tomorrow. It'll be the 5A state championship game, Little Rock Christian and Pulaski Academy. What a heck of a game that was last year. Justice Hill is gone for Little Rock Christian, but they've gotten back here again with no problems at all, and uh, we're looking forward to that matchup between the Bruins and the Warriors, and then we've got Cersei and Benton coming at 6.30. Quick look at the stats from this one before we leave you tonight from the 7A state championship game. We talked about the difference in passing, and that was huge when it comes to how efficient of an offense you can be. When you're one-dimensional, it makes it difficult. North Little Rock does wind up with 80, and they do have a touchdown pass in this game. But uh, Brian able to throw for 30 or 203 and get 309 total yardage. And again, we said, Buck, Day Buck James told me earlier in the week, the telltale stat would be the third down conversions. They did a great job defensively against North Little Rock the first the last two times they've met and they hold them to one out of eight on third down tonight. Yeah, that's that's a stat that you don't see very often. A winning team go one for eight. North Little Rock six of fifteen on third down. A lot of those were you know, on those first couple drives of the football game. But you know you look at those numbers: eighty yards rushing, or excuse me, one hundred and twenty-three yards rushing for North Little Rock on forty-seven attempts. I mean, you hold a team like North Little Rock that hangs their hat on running the football, and you hold them down like that again. Though we've talked about how great that defense was all season long. Defense travels. Defense rarely struggles, and they didn't struggle today, and they shut down a really explosive offense. I got that backwards, didn't I? The one of eight was Bryant. Yeah. That's... Six of 15, so they were much better than, yeah. than they were the last two times they faced them, but not good enough tonight. 21-7, mm -hmm. the final score. As again, we said, we're just getting started. Doubleheader tomorrow, the 12 o'clock game, the 5A state championship and the 6A game set for 6.30. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching AETN Sports.